Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be creating an expense track application but before we start the demonstration I just want to say if you're new to this channel please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. As you can see only 6% of my, my subscribers watch the videos and about 93% of people watch my videos are not subscribed. So if you're new please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you want me to keep making videos. Okay so let's start the demonstration. Okay so here we have the main dashboard of the application and uh, also this data is going to update accordingly. So if we add some entries, uh, let's say in our incomes, so this data will update as well. We can toggle between the incomes and the expenses just to see only the income or the expenses, okay? So yeah, uh, after that here, we have a recent history of the, or let's say if there's money coming in or money going out, uh, for the expenses here you see the recent history and then here it will show you the minimum and maximum salary so the maximum is like the highest amount of salary you've gotten and the minimum is the minimum amount of salary that you have and then for the expenses it shows you as well the minimum expense and also the maximum expense here it shows you the total ex uh, money that you use on your expenses and also the total income and then here's the total remaining balance that you have after the expenses okay so if we go to the incomes page so here you can make entries for the incomes that you have you can also delete the entries or make new entries for example if I were to uh, delete the freelance entry the also the total income updates when I go back it also updates here in the recent history and also the, the data here in the graph updates okay so I'm going to add another entry for the income. I'm going to say freelance again. Okay, so freelance. Okay, I'm going to say, let's say 2000, 2500. And then here you can select a date, a date. Okay, and then you just enter a random date or whatever date you got the income. And then here you can select a category. So let's say uh, freelancing. I'll change this actually to Bitcoin. Bitcoin. And then here. I'll ch change the category to Bitcoin and then I'll say Bitcoin money. Okay, and then I'm just going to add income. As you can see, it's instantly added. And also the icon is going to be showing based on the category you chose. Okay, so here's the Bitcoin uh, icon and also the income changed. All right, so here let's say I try to add income without any entries. So it's going to, there's like validations when I try to add anything it says all fields are required we have some validations in place as well okay so as for the expenses as well it's basically the same thing for the expenses when I add something without values it shows you all fields are required now when I try to input some data in the fields the error will disappear okay so for the expenses it's the same thing we can delete we can add expenses so I can delete rent so it was at the end. So the new entry, a new entry will be at the top. Okay, so let's say I'm going to add rent again. I'm going to say 1000. And then the date, I'll just put a random date. I'll put in January, like 27. And then I'll say, uh, there's no rent in the category. You can add as many categories as you want. So I'm just going to say other. I'm going to say rent and bills. Okay. And then I'm going to add the expense. As you can see, rent appears here and the total expenses change and then when you go to the dashboard everything changes accordingly and also here it shows you the the recent history so the rent was the recent transaction we've made and then bitcoin was the was the other one and then uh, dentist appointment okay so here to show you all the history and the balance everything here updates instantly okay so yeah uh, that's it for the application and also if you haven't noticed if you look uh at the background there's this floating thing in the background just moving about okay so yeah we're going to implement that as well uh, using a custom hook okay so yeah uh that's it for this video uh please don't forget to like comment and subscribe so this will help my videos to be shown to more people so yeah i'll see you in the video all right so i've already opened the workspace that i'm going to be working on so in this case uh, i've created a folder called backend i'm going to create a front end folder in here front end okay so in the back end i'm just going to the terminal and cd into the back end i'm already in the back end folder 
So let's start working making uh, on the back end, making our API. Okay, so I'm going to run npm init, npm init. Okay, uh, just press enter, enter. Our entry point, uh, let's do app.js. You can use index if you want. Okay, so app.js is going to be our entry point. So in here, I'm just going to run npm install, npm. We're going to install the packages that we're going to need. So in this case, I'm going to install express and then mongoose, so we can use mongodb. And then I'm going to install cause. And also, uh, let's do node mon, so we can, you know, save and update without reloading the, the, the server, okay? So node mon, I think that's what we need for now. If we need anything else, we can always install it later, okay? So let's hit enter. So in this case, I'm going to go to the backend. I'm going to create some folders. I'm going to start with DB and then I'm going to create models folder. And then I'm also going to create routes. Routes and then I'm going to create controllers. Okay, so uh, let's create the entry point, which is the app.js. Actually, we need to install uh, dot env so we can use the environment variables okay so in the dot env i'm going to create a dot env file env okay so now i'm going to create a variable i'm just going to name it port and then i'm just going to use port 5000 you can use any port you want save this env file let's create a, a basic server in here so i'm just going to create a simple function and then i'm going to name it server uh, for some reason the spelling is incorrect uh, should be dot env okay so now uh, i'm just going to run this function server okay so now uh, i'm going to create a port variable okay so let's do const and then port here we're just going to require the dot env package that we've uh, installed okay so require dot env dot env okay and then we're just going to run the config method okay so require dot env and then here we're just going to say process process dot env env and then we're just going to say port the variable that we've created okay so here let's just cog this and then let's say you are listening listening to port and then let's see if our we have access to our variables in the env file let's just run npm and then start okay so there's something wrong let's see what's going on missing oh we don't have the script let's go to the packages so this in the scripts here we need to do a start script okay we're going to be using nodemon because we don't want to keep um we don't want to keep you know rerunning our server so nodemon allows us to make changes and save and then everything updates in real time so we do nodemon and then start uh, no app.js so that's our entry point okay so when i run now it's going to run the our entry point which is the app.js so npm start so now we are listening to port 5000 because now we have access to the nv file now okay so let's uh, guess a few things. So we need to get express const. Uh, let's do a variable and name it express equal to require. Uh, require and then we're just gonna require express. Okay, and then we're also going to require. Uh, let's do cause. Okay, uh, that's what we need for now. Um, let's create an app const app equal to okay, let's run express okay so now we're going to be using uh, the app to call the methods coming from express okay so in this case i'm gonna go down here i'm gonna say middleways okay uh, my spellings middleways so in here i'm just going to do app use so our first middleware we're just gonna do express express to JSON okay because we want our data to be in JSON okay and then um, 
we're going to do app dot use uh dot use cause so we're using cause because we don't want to have problems accessing our server okay so in here you can you know uh put like wh wh which um which host you uh that you want the server to be accessed by okay so you can put your domain or whatever where you want your uh your server to be accessed by so in this case we're just going to be leaving empty okay so now um that's now we have calls so let's start creating our actual server let's add some information so here uh, let's get rid of the console let's do app dot listen so we're going to listen um to port okay it's going to take in a callback function okay so in here let's just do cog listening to port and then here we just add the port okay like something we did before all right so now now let's see it's still showing the same thing that means it's working so let's see if uh, let's try to do something let's do app okay app what can we do in here so let's do get actually let's do a get method so in here let's get the home page okay so here we're going to do a request and then a response okay so the response so here we can you know send the response once we get to a, a home page okay so let's do response just send okay we can, let's do hello world okay so now i'm going to be using postman to test this api so let's uh, open postman so in this case, let's open localhost 5000. I'm just going to copy this. Um, let's do, we're using 5000. We're just going to listen to the homepage. Let's see what we're going to get. So it says, hello world. That means it's working. Okay, so now we have access to our server. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this. Let's go to the MongoDB Atlas and set a new project. So here, uh, I'm going to minimize just create a new project i'm just going to name this expense tracker you can name this whatever you want so if you don't have an account for mongodb atlas you can create a new account or you can you know use the local version okay let's do create project okay so it's gonna take a while to create the project uh now we have a project okay uh let's go to the let me add current okay so now don't forget to add your ip so now let's go to the uh build a database just uh, go for free create a free one okay and then select whatever region you want to use and then create a cluster okay just create a password here you can just i'm just gonna say maclean's yt yt I'm just gonna auto generate a password, a random password. You can use any password you want. I'm going to change this later anyways, just to show you, to demonstrate to you how you can do this, if you don't know how to do it, and then create user. Okay, so that's it, it's done. So you can go to the database. Uh, let's go to the .env. Uh, we have the password, I'm just gonna paste the password here. Just don't worry, don't copy this, don't copy this password anyway, it's not gonna work because I'm going to regenerate a new one later. So uh, go to connect and then connect to your application, copy this, copy this uh, link. And then down here say Mongo and then URL and then equal to, and then paste it here. So now your password, just take your password here and then replace this with your password. Okay. And then save. So now we have the Mongo URL. I'm going to close this. So now what I'm going to do, let's go to the DB file. I'm just going to create a file. I'm going to say db.js. You can name this db whatever you want, but I'm just going to name it db.js. So here I'm just going to say const mongoose. And then actually let's just do this. IEQ and then mongoose. This is the quicker way. Okay. So I'm going to say const uh, db. 
okay it's going to be in a, a synchronous function okay let's do an error function so now in here i'm just going to do a try and catch uh try catch try catch okay so here i'm just going to say mongoose i'm going to do the set i'm just going to say strict strict query and then we're just going to set that to false all right and then we're just going to connect let's do a wait mongoose connect so what are we going to pass in the so the first thing we need to pass in is the uil which we're going to pass in so we're just going to say process because it's coming from the env environment variable so process dot env env okay and then we're just going to say mongo uil like this whatever you've named your url okay so here i'm just gonna say cog in the error i'm gonna say db connection error and then here i'm just gonna say cog uh, db connected you can name this whatever you want connected just to check if if our, our database is working so here i'm just gonna do mojo let's uh, export this mojo mojo that exports here we're just gonna do the db okay so now uh in here in the server what are we going to do we're just going to connect to our database okay so let's just do here db okay let's just call the function db hopefully when i save we should see db connected okay so now it says db connected so that means we have successfully successfully connected to uh, to mongo Okay, we have connected to our database. It says DB connected. All right, so now what we need to do, uh, let's start with, let's start with the routes folder. Okay, so in the routes, I'm going to create a new file. Okay, so let me call this transactions for JS. Okay, so uh, let's start, what routes do we need to start with? Let's actually start with getting the router. Let's do const router, router. So you can name this router, whatever you want, this name here. We're getting this uh, from express, okay? So here we're just gonna say require, require, and then express, and then dot router, okay? Because we're going to access, we're going to get the router, okay? So now I'm gonna save this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do down here, I'm gonna say router, I'm gonna do a get method. So let's uh, let's test, because we want to test to see if this is working. So we need to run a callback function, let's do request and then response. So in here, let's do uh, response. We're gonna send hello world again, hello world okay when we reach the home page i'm gonna save this and then we need to do mojo do the exports again exports here we're just gonna export the the router okay so now let's go back to the server so we can configure the router okay so now um we need to we've already imported the db so now let's do the the routes so here i'm gonna say routes routes so in here for the routes i'm going to require uh, something called read their sync directory uh, synchronously so it's going to do line by line so what read their sync does is it's going to read information in a specified directory okay so in this case i'm going to say const i'm going to get uh, read directory sync and then we're going to require we're going to require the FS mojo, the file system mojo. Okay. We're just going to get this uh, read dressing from the FS mojo. Okay. So now let's go back to the routes. We're going to do read directory synchronously, synchronously <laughs> read dressing. I can't even say the word. So it's going to read whatever files we have in this routes folder here. So that's the, that's our target folder. Okay. So let's uh, give it a target folder, which is our routes, the routes folder. It's going to read the files in there. So let's say we have multiple files. I'm just gonna map those files. Okay, 
I'm just going to name each file route. Okay, and then in here, in here, we're just uh, going to do app, app.use. Okay, so in here, uh, we're going to create a base URL for our API. So it's going to be slash API. And then let's name it v1 just in case you want to uh, you want to change your api later on okay v1 so that's our uh, base uh, api and then i'm just going to separate that with a comma and then i'm going to do require i'm going to do require uh, the routes okay so here i'm going to do routes routes and then i'm going to add on the the route okay the route like this so now let's save okay so there seems to be an issue uh, let's see what's going on can't find module routes transactions to js ah because i i need to separate this with a slash okay so now save okay perfect so now it's working so now let's go to postman uh, let's go to Postman and go to the home page. Now send. So there's an issue when we go to the main page. Okay. So let me save. So make sure you save everything. Save. So let's go back again and do a get request. Still, there's an issue. Okay. Let's see why. Ah, I'm such an idiot. I just realized uh, I forgot to change the the API, uh, the link here. So we're using API slash V1. Okay, so this is our base point. So after this, we need to put slash API V1. And then that's when we can, you know, do the get request. And now, as you can see, it says hello world. I forgot to update this. Okay. So now it's working as expected. So now uh, when I go back to the transaction route, uh, route, so the get request is working uh, as expected. So uh, let's start by actually creating a model. Okay, so let's go to the models folder. Let's create one, let's name this income. Uh, let's do income model.js, okay. All right, so in here, in the income model, we're just, we're going to do a, a require again. So we're going to require uh, mongoose. Okay, so let's go down here. We're gonna say const income. Let's name it income schema. Okay, income schema. We're going to be creating a new one, a new schema. I'm gonna say, we're gonna create a new instance coming from the mongoose.schema. Okay, mongoose schema. So in here, we're gonna do a title. So for the title, uh, it's gonna be type. Oh my days! Type. Type of title is gonna be like type of string. Okay, type string, and then we're going to do required. Required. Let's do that. Let's put it to true. And then um, <clears throat> let's do trim. Trim. Let's set that to true. And then uh, let's do. I'm wondering if we should give it a max length. Uh, but uh, let's give it a max length, actually. Max length. Let's give it. Let's do 50. Okay. So that's it for the title. And then we're going to have an amount. In amount field, uh, let's do type. So the type is going to be a number for the for this, and then we're going to do required. Required. We're just going to set that to true. Okay, and then we're going to do a max length. Max length, and then let's do uh, twenty. I mean, let's uh, also trim it. Let's get rid of the spaces. Okay, so let's do trim. Let's just set that to true. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. 
Okay, so duplicate. So make sure you separate them with a the comma. So here I'm just gonna say type. Type, so it's gonna be, this one should be type of string. String, okay. And then I'm just gonna set a default value. So for the default, I'm just gonna set that to income. Okay, so that's the default, the type is income. So we're going to have income, and then we're also going to have a type of expense. So we have income and expense. Uh, let's duplicate this. We need a date field as well. So let's do date. So instead of amount, let's change this to date. So for the date field, for the date field, uh, we're going to do a, a, a date, okay? So uh, here, type, just change this to date. And then uh, required, it's gonna be required. I'm gonna get rid of max length. Uh, you can also get rid of trim if you want, that's fine. Uh, let's go to category. I'm gonna paste this. I'm gonna create a category, category. So the type is gonna be type of string. Okay, for the category, get rid of max length. Okay. Uh, we're also going to have a description. Uh, you can actually leave a max length here if you want for the category, but if it's fine if you don't. Okay. So we're going to have a description. Description. Uh, for the description, the type, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do type of string. Okay. I'm also going to activate... Uh, the timestamps okay whenever we create something i want to activate the timestamps when we created the item or when we updated the item i'm going to say time timestamps i'm going to say that to true okay so it's basically going to be created at and updated at okay so that's basically it so now i'm just going to do module and then we're just going to do exports okay and then equal to mongoose here we're just going to say it's because it's a model, so mongoose.model. And then we're just going to name the model income. Okay, income. And then uh, we're going to do the income schema. Yep. Okay, so now with the schema, um, let's save this schema. So let's go back to the routes. So let's start by posting or AKA we need to create a route for creating data. So instead of get, get, I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, so get rid of this. And then I'm gonna change the method to post. Okay, so we, now we're going to have a post method. So here I'm just gonna put an endpoint. We If we hit this endpoint, then I'm gonna do post. Okay, let's do add income. Okay, so this is the endpoint for posting. And then I'm going to create a method called add income. So this method is going to be coming from the controllers. So in the controllers, create a new file again. Name this transactions. Transactions.js. You can name this whatever you want. It's, it's entirely up to you. Okay. So, or you can name it income, actually. It makes more sense to name it income. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at transactions, but you can name it income. Uh, okay. So I'm going to... I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna name this income to JS. Okay, so income. So here I'm going to create a function. Um, here I've named it add income. So let's go back to income. I'm gonna say exports. I'm gonna say add income. Okay, so we're gonna take in the request and then the response. Let's be, make this uh, async. Async. Okay. So, make sure, let's go back here to the transactions to make sure we import this method here, this function. So, add income. So, make sure you import the add income like this from the income controller. Okay. Uh, oops, this naming is weird. So income.js, okay, perfect. Uh, Where's the error here? Oh, okay, now we're good. So uh, where are we going to get the data? 
that we're going to be adding into the database, well, it's going, it's going to be coming from the request body, okay? So I'm just going to say clg uh, request.body, okay? So uh, when I hit the endpoint, add income, let's see what happens uh, in the console, okay? So let's go add income and then change the method to post and then hit send. Okay, so now it's an empty object. So in the requested body, I can add something in here. So let's go to the body. And then here, let's add some inputs. I'm just going to copy this object. So you can create this object from scratch. Okay. So in here, uh, we have this object. Okay, so let's go to raw and then from change from text to JSON. Okay, like that. And then cancel this request. Oops, cancel the request and then send again. Okay, so we have title, amount, category, description, and date. This is just random data. Just send. And then as you can see here, the requested body, we're returning an object containing the data that was sent through here through the post method. So we need a way to get this data. So from this requested body, we're just going to destruct the information. Okay. So we're basically going to do request uh, dot body. Okay, so here we're just going to say const, we're going to destructure. Okay, so what are we going to destructure here? Well, we're going to destructure the title. Okay, so the title, and then we're going to destructure the amount, and then we're going to get the category. Okay, category, and we're also going to get the description, description, and then we're going to get the date. Okay, so title, amount, category, description and then date okay so now i'm going to create i'm going to uh, to create an instance the okay, const i'm going to name this instant income so this is we're going to create an instance of the the schema that we created which is the income schema okay the income model so actually i think we've named income schema okay schema like this okay income schema uh let's just double check uh more income schema yep so here we're just creating a new instance uh using these inputs here okay so income that's our instance all right so i'm going to put the title the title which is coming from the requester body amount and then category and then we have the description and then we have the the date okay okay so now let's see OG let's see uh, the income the income instance what what we're gonna get so I'm gonna send again this data here post okay so now we have the income object here there it is Okay, but this data is not being saved to the database. Okay, so we need a way to save this data, but I'm just gonna do a try and catch. Okay, try catch. I'm also going to do some validations. Okay, I'll start with the validations first. Validations, just in case our inputs are empty. So I'm just gonna say if, I'm gonna say no title. If there's no title or if not, if there's no category, category or if there's no description description uh, finally if there's no date so we need all of these inputs okay so that's why we're doing validations here uh, we're basically just going to return uh, what are we going to return we're going to return a response and then sta status code uh, 400 S status code 400 and then we're just gonna put that into json okay i'm just gonna name this message you can name this error if you want to i'm just gonna name this message okay and then um uh, i'm just gonna put a, a a message saying uh amount must be a positive number okay actually no no all fields are required for this one okay all fields are required 
Okay, all fields are required. You can put in any me message that you want. I'm going to duplicate this. Okay, so here I'm just going to say if amount amount is less than or equal to zero, the amount or amount or amount if amount is not equal to is if it's not a number if amount is not a number um we're going to you know do an error okay so it's saying amount must be a positive number okay you, you can put this error whatever you want whatever error message that you want to to use okay so that's it for the for the validations so this uh, symbol validations i'm just going to say await and then I'm just going to save this uh, instance, the income instance, to the database. So it's basically income.save. Okay, like this. Uh, if you want a, a message or a, a message, you can just say response to a status. If it's, if it's done, if it's okay. So we're going to use status 200. So that means it's okay. And then uh, you can do it to a JSON. You can put like a custom message, you know, if you want to show the user. If the... It should be message. Okay. So message, message. So here you can just say income added. Okay. You can put any message that you want to to put. So status, um, status. So the status is 200. So now let's save. Let's see if it's working. So I'm just going to say hello, test test and then I'm just going to say send so it says income added so we need to go to the because now we're actually saving to the database let's go to the mongo atlas I'm going to minimize I'm going to go to the browse collections um, incomes as you can see now we've sent, we have hello taste it's being saved to the database even when I refresh it's not going to go anywhere because it's saved already okay so we can create, uh, keep creating new documents. So now we can create documents. Uh, let's do, let's do the error. Okay. So I'm gonna change this. The status for the error is gonna be 500. So here I'm just gonna. You can put any message you want. I'm just gonna say server error. Okay. So now let's save. Okay. So that's the method for adding income. I'm going to create another method for getting. This is going to be simple for getting all of our documents, okay? So here I'm just going to say get incomes, okay? So that's our method for getting. I'm just going to do a try and catch, okay? So uh, I'm going to do the same thing, const incomes. I'm going to do await, okay? Because it's a synchronous function, we need to use the await. Uh, keyword and then we just want to say income schema and then we are just going to run the find okay but i want to sort these items okay i want to sort uh, the, the last created item i want it to be at the top okay let's say if it's a list so uh, by default the last created item will be at the bottom but i want it to be at the top so we're going to sort this so find we're going to find everything and then we're just going to run the sort method and then in the sort method, we're just going to sort this by uh, created, created at, okay, created at uh, property. And then we're gonna say minus one. We're just gonna reverse that, okay. So now uh, let's do uh, response. Uh, do a status, okay. So the status is gonna be two hundred. So here we're just gonna say JSON, and then income, incomes, okay. So now in the error. Uh, I'm just gonna do the status. This is to be 500. So this should be the same as uh, it's like server error. We're gonna do message, message, and then let's do server error. Okay, so error. My keyboard is a bit sticky, so sometimes when I press some keys, they won't uh, like get pressed. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate this. We need to have a delete, a delete, okay, a delete function. So here we get all of the uh, items and then we're gonna do delete. 
we're going to delete the income okay so whatever item we press we want to uh, delete that okay income so now i'm going to get rid of these so we're going to get something from the requester body in this case the id so each item it is an id we want to get this id so if we get the corresponding id and then we're going to delete the item with the id that we get so what i'm going to do get rid of this okay we need to get the id from the requester body i'm going to say const id equal to request dot body we're going to test this in a minute okay actually it's not coming from the body it's coming from the params okay i'm going to show you what uh what this does okay request the uh, params okay so now we let's go to the let's do income schema and then we're going to do find by id find by id and delete okay and then the, we're going to delete using this id okay and then we're going to do a dot then dot then and then it's going to take a callback function we're just going to say income okay uh, for some reason my keys sometimes they don't work <laughs> okay income i'm just gonna put a status code here code and then the code is going to be 200 so successful so message uh, we're just going to say income deleted income deleted okay i'm going to copy this copy and then we're going to do catch i don't know why i don't have auto completion so the catch is going to take a copy function as well i'm going to do error okay so now in here I'm, it's going to be status of 500 uh, okay so just put say server error okay or you can just do the error this error here it's up to you okay so now let's save now let's actually test this to see if it works so first off let's go to the transact in here we need to add some methods so now we have a endpoint for getting uh, for adding so we need an endpoint for getting everything okay so let's do uh, let's do dot we're gonna get so the endpoint for getting let's do get incomes okay so that's the endpoint for getting the incomes and then let's get the function get incomes okay make sure you import the function here all right so now we have that make sure you don't close this like this okay because we want to chain these uh the, the methods okay so i'm going to run a delete okay so here we're going to do delete uh income okay income so the param so we're getting the param so the param is going to be the id okay so here's how we do a param so we're basically going to get this id here and then we're going to pass it here okay we're going to just going to pass the id here well, coming from the param and then here we're just going to do delete uh income okay so now we have uh post get delete okay so now we can do the functionality that we're looking for but let me show you what is a param uh what is it the id so here i'm gonna say cog uh, params okay so we need to do this on the delete uh here on the delete uh let's go to the postman change the endpoint to delete um when i need actually i need an id actually let's test the get first uh get i think it's incomes let's do get okay so it's not working so now let me double check the endpoints so get incomes so that's the endpoint get incomes uh, let's go back and save let's me try to run the get method again uh, get so it's not working so v1 get incomes cannot get okay get incomes so income schema defined 
Let me see why the get incomes is not working. Okay. All right. So it seems everything is correct. Let's uh, let's go back to the routes incomes. Get incomes. Okay. Uh, run it again. Not working again. It's very strange. <laughs> Okay, so for defined, and then we're going to, let me get rid of the sort method. Let me see what's going on if we're only using defined. Okay. Okay, so nothing happens. I don't think, I don't think it does, it, it has anything to do with uh, defined, uh, with the sort function. Sort method, mm -hmm. get all right. Okay, let me go back to the incomes. Ah. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I fo I'm missing all these slashes. I don't know what's going on with me today. <laughs> so now we should be getting the data. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, okay, so now probably you've noticed that, <laughs> but I didn't. Uh, okay, so now, uh, yeah, we're getting the data. So let me try to add more data. Let's, let me go post. I'm gonna go add. So I'm gonna add uh, test two. Test two, I'm gonna add this. Uh, I think it's income. Okay, so now we have another item. I'm gonna do get. I'm gonna run a get method. Okay, so now we have two items from our database. So if I take the ID of, let's say this item here, hello test, Okay, I'm going to, um, so it's delete income, okay? So delete, delete income, income. Okay, so this, the, this is our endpoint. Okay, I'm, now you pass in the ID, okay? After that, so for the delete income, I'm actually, Gonna show you the params before I'm not gonna delete this. So I'm gonna go to the income. I'm just gonna um get rid of the th this one. Yeah, I'm gonna co come back again. I'm gonna save. So when I hit the endpoint, okay. So it's not showing nothing. It's showing nothing. Nothing in the console. So let's do a delete method and then hit delete. Okay, so there's an error. Uh, params is not defined or should be request. Request of params. Okay, now hit the delete again. So here it shows the par uh, the ID. Okay, uh, when we do request of params, there it is the ID because I'm sending this ID. I can say hello here. Okay, so it's going to be cancel this and then send and then hello will be our params. So as you can see ID. So here we're getting the ID. We're just uh, distracting from the request of params. We essentially want the ID, whatever we're sending. Okay, which is the ID. So when I do this, now the ID shows hello. Okay, because here it's hello. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be our actual ID. Okay, so I'm going to... 
I'm gonna get rid of the this one, the COG. So now let's save, okay? So now let's actually try to uh, delete the item, uh, this one. So now let's go back to the transition here. So now let's try to delete. So I hit delete now. So it says income deleted. So now let's try to actually get incomes. Okay, so now let's run the get method. So now as you can see, we only have one item. Okay, so now we can post, we can delete, we can get items. So now we need to do, essentially do the same thing, but for expenses, I'm just going to uh, copy and paste some stuff as well. Expenses, I'm just gonna say expense, the JS. Okay, so what I will do in the income, I'll just CA, con con uh, control C, and then I'll paste everything in the expense. Okay, uh, basically what I'm going to do, it's basically the same thing, but we are just gonna rename, I'm just gonna rename the function, uh, add expense, expense, um, here it's get expense, it's basically the same thing, expense and income, get expense, delete expense, expense, okay, so add and delete expense, Okay, so now what we need to do is create a, a new model. So model expense, expense model to JS. Uh, copy this, uh, go to the expense model like that. And then we're going to refactor here. Expense model uh, F2, just select this one and then hit F2 to refactor. So it's going to update everything, okay, with this name. Expense, expense schema. Okay, so as you can see when we scroll down, we refactored, it's changed here to expense schema. So here we're just gonna change this to expense. Okay, expense. So now what we need to do, let's go to the expense in here and just change the name to expense uh expense uh oops okay income expense expense okay so i'm gonna copy this expense we're basically going to replace the income schema all right and uh, we need to do the same thing for this one. Should be the expense schema. Expense. All right, because we're in the expense now. So here we just update this to expense. Expense. Uh, expense. Okay, so. All right, so now let's save. Okay, so what we need to do now, uh, we need to basically do the, these methods again. Uh, we start from post, but this one is gonna be an expense. Okay, so make sure you put a slash. Okay, so let's start with uh, adding the expense. Okay, so let's do add expense, expense, okay. So for the add expense, I'm gonna get the add expense function. Okay, add expense. After that, we need to do these two methods here as well. So we're gonna get expenses, expenses, then get expenses, and then delete expense, expense, okay and then delete expense. Okay, so make sure to import uh, the, this uh, the functions from expense and then also the functions from the income. Okay, I'm gonna save this. So now let's actually test the expenses. Okay, so let's try to add an expense. Uh, copy the endpoint. Um, okay, so here, let's do add expense. So the schema, 
is basically similar, so it's or the the properties are the same. So let's say I'm just gonna say expense test. Okay, I'm gonna say amount one thousand. I'm gonna say uh, test category. Okay, so now uh, you can just test this. Okay, so let's do a post. Let's do post. Okay, so now it's saying expense added. Okay, so now let's actually try to get expenses. I uh, can't remember what I've named them. It's get expense. Let's do expenses. Get expenses. Now let's do a get method. Get. As you can see now, we're getting the expense. Okay, we're creating the expense. Let's try to delete this expense. Okay. So, uh, to delete, delete, delete expense. Okay, so delete expense. So we need to do the param, which is our ID. Let's pass in the ID. And now let's run the delete method. Delete. So it says expense deleted. Let's try to get, okay, get the expenses. Let's go get method. And get, as you can see, it's empty. Because there's nothing there. Let's do let's do a post and add. And add expense. I'm gonna add again. Uh, it should be expense or something. Add. So now we've added something. Let's do a get. And now uh, should be get. Okay, get expenses. So now there it is. So you can name this whatever you want instead of get expenses or expenses. And then just do a get, okay, a get, get request, okay. But yeah, you can name this whatever you want these endpoints, okay. So as you can see, everything now works. Our server is ready. So now we just need to go to the front end and do the front end app. I'll see you on the front end section, okay. So now the front end folder is ready. I've uh, just created a React app already, so I haven't done anything yet. So when I go to the browser, I'm I'm just running the front end, the default React app. So uh, I'm just going to close everything we were doing in the server section. I'm just going to close everything. Okay, so now that I've closed everything in the server, so for the front end, uh, let's go. Uh, if you want to make sure the server is running in the background, so just open another instance of the terminal and then open the backend uh, folder and run the, uh, the server and then open another terminal and then open the front end folder. Okay. So if you don't know how to do that, I'm just going to close this. So just CD, uh, do CD, and then go to the directory you want to go into, in this case, front end. Okay. I'm already in the front end. And then once you're in there, just run npm start. Okay. Uh, you can do this front end folder. So you can put this somewhere else if you don't want to put in the same project. That's, that's up to you. Okay. So I'm going to also open localhost 3000, which is the finished uh, project. I'm just going to leave this on this screen here. Okay, I'm just going to leave it here for references for reference purposes. Okay, so uh, let's do uh, some cleanup. I'm just going to get rid of almost everything in here. I'm going to delete, go to the index. Let's do cleanup, cleanup in here. Get rid of the index CSS as well. Save the index in the app.js. We're going to get rid of almost everything. And then we're going to save. Okay, until we have no errors like now. No more errors. So basically, first off, we need to install some packages. Let's start with npm install. We're going to use Axios to do our requests. Okay. And then we're going to install chart.js. We're also going to install um, gsub. I don't think we need gsub for now. Let's do moment. We're going to be working with dates. Okay. So let's do moment. Uh, and then we also need um, React JS, React, and then chart JS two. Okay. Uh, we also need React. Uh, we need a date picker. So, oops, React. So make sure the spellings for these are correct. Okay. So we need date. Picker. Okay. Uh, we also need styled components. Styled components. 
you can actually use um, CSS modules if you want to, or you can use SAS, that's entirely up to you. Okay, so now we've created those, I'm just gonna create a few directories that we're gonna be using. So in the source file, I'm gonna create a components folder, components, components, and then I'm going to create a utils folder, utils. I'm also going to create a context folder, and then I'm going to create styles folder, styles. I think that's what we need for now. If we need anything else, we can always create it later, do it later. So in the styles, I'm going to create a global style, a style, a style components, global style. Okay, and then dot JS. So here we're just gonna import, it's called create global, global from style components. Okay, from styled components, create global, actually global style. Okay, here we're just gonna say, um, export const, const, what are we going to export? We're going to export, um, let's do global style. Okay, you can name this whatever you want, global style, equal to create global style, okay? So in here, we're just gonna do basic page resetting. I, I'm sure you know how to do this already. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna do page resetting and also the, getting the font. Okay, I'm gonna press this here. Okay, so I'm also gonna do a few variables. I'm gonna do root and then I'm just gonna paste in the values here for the var variables. I don't want to do them one by one. Okay, so you can copy these var uh, variables. I'm also gonna get a font, uh, Google fonts. So the one that I want, I'm going to be using Nunito. Okay, so enter, get rid of this. Let's do Nunito. Okay, so I'm gonna get a regular. I'm gonna get 500, 600, seven, all the way to eight. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna copy all of this, go back to the, go public, index HTML, paste it here, save, and then get rid of the index. So now uh, let's copy the font family and then just put it into the body body and then I'm gonna give it a background color I'm gonna set that to red this is temporary just to see if it's working so to do the global let's just set the global style in here in the app in, in the index okay so let's do global style and then I'm gonna see if it's working so make sure you are running the project now so I'm gonna run npm start and then I'm gonna go to the browser okay so I'm gonna refresh this uh, make sure it's running Okay, so it should be red to see, to indicate our style components is working. Okay, perfect, our style components is working indeed. So now I'm just gonna do a font size, okay, and uh, overflow hidden for the body. And then I'm just gonna do a color, uh, the RGB. Okay, perfect, now I'm just gonna save. I'm gonna get rid of the background color now. So now let's go back to the app.js and uh, start styling. Okay, so in the app, I'm gonna say const app styled equal to styled and then dot div. So I'm going to be copying and pasting some styles, just to make everything quicker. I don't want the video to be very long. App styled, I'm gonna copy app styled and then replace, oops, copy app, app styled and then replace. So make sure you import style components, okay, when you're doing styles. So now uh, we need to do the styles for the app. So I'm gonna set the height to be 100 VH, 100 VH for the height. And then I'm going to set a background image, background image. So we need an images folder uh, and I, we need some images, okay? So I'm gonna go to the source, I'm gonna do IMG, I'm just gonna paste in some images, okay? So I'm gonna put in some images in the images folder. 
so the image that we the image that we want is called um bg so import bg from uh it's actually img oops img and then bg.png okay so that the image that that's uh, that's the image that we want okay so app styled i can copy this i'm gonna put it up as up styled here and then here we can basically just pass in uh, the url the url and then here we can just pass the bg okay bg but if you want the uh, styles uh, if you want the oops here we do like this Okay, like this. But if you want the app style to be at the bottom, that's what I want. So what we, we can do is basically we can pass in the BG as a prop. Okay, because I want it to be at the bottom. So here I just can just pass in it as a prop. So um so now we can just access the as a prop. Okay, we can access the image as a prop. We can do like this. We can do props. Okay, and then props dot bg. Okay, like this. So now we have access to the image when I save. So now the bg image is now showing. Okay, so I'm gonna do position. I'm gonna set that to relative. All right. So I'm going to do a main, which is going to which is going to contain our main, our main, uh, our main data. Okay. So I'm gonna do the main later actually. So now I just need to create a layout. So in the styles, let's do layouts. Layouts to JS. Okay, so I need a few layouts that I can inherit some styles from. I'm gonna say export main layout main layout equal to styled styled.diff. Okay, so this is going to be our main layout. Okay, this should be const main layout. Okay, so for the main layout, I'm just gonna give it a padding, a height, and a display flex. Okay, and then a gap of two RAM. And then I'm going to do export uh, export const. I'm gonna do inner layout. Okay, equal to styled. It's gonna be another div as well. Okay. So I'm just gonna give it a padding and a width of 100%. Okay, there we go. So now let's save. So we have inner layout and main layout. I'm gonna close the layouts page. Let's go to the app.js. So I need to get the main layout, okay? So here I'm gonna say main, uh, main uh, layout. So we need to import that. So import main layout layout uh, from styles and then layouts okay so here uh, we just do main main layout like this okay now let's like save so now we have the access to the main layout okay um now let's see if i'm just gonna put an h1 i'm just gonna say hello i'm gonna save so now as you can see, we have a layout. Okay, so we have the padding. Okay, perfect. All right. So now I'm thinking we should, so in the final, as you can see, oh, as you can see, we have this thing floating around in the background. Okay, so it's moving. Okay, so it's an orb. So I'm just gonna create a new component. I'm just gonna uh, name the component <coughs> orb. Okay, so you can name whatever you want. So uh, I'm gonna go to the components. I'm gonna create the folder. Okay, I'm gonna create another folder in the components. I'm just gonna say button. Okay, so in here, I'm gonna create a component orb.js. Okay, so that's our component. It's gonna be functional component. Okay, okay, so now uh, in here, we need a few things, okay, so for for us for this to work. Uh, I'm going to create an orb styled in here, okay. 
So I'm gonna do the stars in here. I'm gonna say const orb styled equal to let's do styled. Okay, let's do a div. It's gonna be a div. Okay. Uh, copy this. I'm going to replace. I'm gonna get rid of the text in here. Okay. So uh, for the orb, I'm just going to give it a height, a width and a height. So I'm gonna say width. I'm gonna say seventy vh height. Same thing, seventy vh. You can give it whatever height you want. I'm gonna say position to absolute. Position absolute. I'm gonna give it a margin left, and also a border radius of fifty percent. So I'm gonna say border radius fifty percent. Okay, and then uh, margin top and margin left. Okay, I'm also going to give this a background color. Okay, so the background color and the filter. Okay, to make it blurry, so it's gonna be like four hundred pixels for the blur. Okay. And then uh, for the color, it's F56692. And then we have these two colors here. Okay, so it's basically a gradient. So now, uh, let me see if this orb is showing. So we need to basically go into the app.js and do the orb, okay? So let's do it in here. Orb. I don't know why it's not importing. Import up from components. Okay. So now uh there it is. So there is our thing. Okay, so you can you can reduce the blur to kind of see what's going on. Reduce the blur to 100 pixels. There it is. Okay. So now we need to animate this to move okay back and forth, left and right. Okay, so we're going to use uh, keyframes uh, for the animations. So let's do the animations uh, using. Okay, so let's do uh, const move. Okay, and then here we're going to do keyframes. Keyframes, style components, because we're using style components for the keyframes. Okay, so I'm just going to do uh, a transform okay so at zero i'm going to translate to zero and then 100 it's going to be zero again it's like the initial position but we need to animate the 50 percent at 50 percent we need to do something okay i'm going to paste this so let's say for the x uh for the x axis i'm going to say let's say uh 400 pixels and then for the Y, let me say 500 pixels, okay? So now we have the animation. Uh, we just need to run the animation down here in the styles. Okay, I'm gonna do animation. So, and then just put the name of the animation and, and then give it a time. So the animation is gonna be infinite, okay? So it's gonna be 15 seconds, alternate, and then linear, infinite. So there's the animation here. It's very slow. I'm gonna say one second. Okay, so there's the animation. It's going back and forth. Okay. So, but I want this animation to work according to the viewport width. Okay. To the width uh, of the viewport here. So we need to get the width of the viewport. And also we, we might need to get the height of the viewport as well. So um, I need the width and the height of the viewport so I can, you know, do the transformations. The translations so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to utils i'm going to say use i'm going to create a hook so the hook i'm going to say use full screen okay actually i'm going to say use window you can name this whatever you want or get i'm going to say we use window use window size okay dot js okay so now uh, we have the use window size hook, so we need to actually export this. Export const use window size. Okay. 
export use window size so this is going to be our hook so i'm going to create a state in here okay i'm going to say const i'm going to say um size and then i'm going to say set size set size i'm going to get use state use state okay so by default it's going to be an array with two elements okay so by default the width and the height is going to be zero initially and then i'm going to run a use effect okay so i can update whatever whenever it's um whenever this the screen size change we basically want to run a use effect and update the size okay the state so the use effect is going to take in a callback function so uh, for the dependence array it's going to be empty because it's going to fire uh, on window resize so here i'm going to say const uh, update up update ah my spelling update size so, okay so this is a function uh, that we're going to be using to update the size so in this function in the update size we're just going to change uh, we're just going to change we're going to set size we're going to change the state okay i'm going to say window dot inner width because the window is the global object we can access the window anywhere okay so inner width we're getting the width of the window so that's the x and then for the y we're getting window dot inner height okay that's for the y-axis value so, so every time we change the screen size we want to trigger this function okay so we're gonna say window window dot add event listener okay so the event listener that we're going to use is the re resize because we want to trigger the update size function every time we uh, we change the screen size okay we also need to do a cleanup a cleanup function to get rid of the event listeners we're going to do return okay we're just going to return a function uh, for the cleanup and then here we're just going to say a window just going to say a window dot remove event listener remove event listener we're just going to remove the size the resize we're going to remove the event listener and also we're going to put in our function Okay, so there's one more thing that we need to do. In this function, we're not returning anything yet, so we need to return something. So what we're going to just return an object. I'm gonna do width. So for the width, uh, width, I'm gonna say sizes, um, size. I'm gonna select the first. Okay, the first element, uh, which is the x x size, and then I'm gonna do a height. So for the height, I'm just gonna select the second element which is one okay so here i'm returning width and height okay so now we have uh, a hook that uh okay so now we need to access the hook in here okay so i'm gonna say use window okay so now we have the hook so what we need to do now uh, we need to get the width okay so the width and the const we're going to destructure width and also the height so we're destructuring width and height from use window size okay so let's try to cog this so let's do width width and then let's do height so hopefully when we change the size it should update okay as you can see initially the state was zero so now here's the width size and there's the height size so as you can see, the hash size is not going to change, but the width, as you can see, it's updating. So that means our state is updating. So make sure you have um, uh, React Tools, uh, the extension for Chrome, React Tools, the extension here, React Developer Tools. So let's go and see our state. Okay, so uh, click the orb. So uh, where's our state? Okay, so here's the window size. So as you can see, when I change, the state is updating. Okay. So what we need to do, uh, we need to make this uh, animation work according to the screen size. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do now, 
Now we have width and height. So I'm just going to embed this, uh, the width and height in the, so the X direction. I'm just gonna embed this in here. I'm just gonna embed the width. Also, I'm just gonna embed the height in here. Width, I'm gonna embed the height, okay? And I'm just gonna do pixels at the end. Uh, same for the width two, for the width two pixels. I'm gonna save, okay? So as you can see, our animation now works, but uh, maybe I want this animation to stop like somewhere here, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do height, maybe divided by, uh, let's say 1.5, okay? So now it's somewhere here. Um, we can kind of do the same thing for the width. I'm gonna say width divided by, I'll do 1.2 for the width, okay? I'll do that. Okay, now let's save. Uh, I mean, I think this is, I mean, it looks all right, but let me try to change this to two. Yeah, I think I'll leave it at two, okay? And then I'm going to increase the blur to 400, back to 400 pixels, because I want it to be like, like this. And then the duration, I'm going to go back to 15 seconds. Okay, you can change this duration to whatever you want. So now, yeah, that's it. Let's try to create a navigation component. I'm just going to speed up things a little bit. So I'm going to do navigation. Do JS. Oh, it's a nav it's a folder. So in this folder, we're going to create a navigation component. Navigation JS. Okay, so it's a functional component. Export. I'm gonna say const. And nav styled equal to styled dot nav. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to be pasting in a lot of styles just to make this uh, the styling process quicker. Okay, so now we have the navigation. We need to actually start doing the navigation. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so uh, in the navigation, we're going to have a few things. So we're going to have a user, a user section, user container. Okay. And then I'm going to have an image avatar. So I'm going to import an image, import avatar from, uh, okay. IMG avatar. So now we have the image. And then in here, we're going to have a text with an H2 and money. It's a div named text. Okay, just a title H2. And then after the user container, we're going to have menu items. Items. Okay. So basically, this is going to be an unordered list UL. Okay. Unordered list. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just save this. Okay. So I'm going to go to the utils. I'm going to create something called menu items.js. Okay. So here I'm going to say export const menu items equal to an array. So this one is going to be an array. Okay. I'm going to give it an ID. So the first one, uh, it's going to be have an ID of one and then a title. So the title, I'm just going to say dashboard. Okay. Dashboard. Dashboard. And then we're going to have an icon. 
icon and then we're going to have a link okay if you want this to go anywhere slash dashboard if you're using react router okay so i'm going to paste in the remaining items okay so uh the icons we don't have these icons yet so in the utils again create a new file and name it icons.js okay so we need to get the cdn of font awesome font awesome cdn okay so make sure go to the cdn copy this link here link tag go to the public index after the fonts just paste it paste in the paste in okay the link for the cdn okay okay so now save and then close the index so in the icons in the icons we're just going to uh, create a few fun items here we're going to say export const and then let's say dashboard dashboard equal to we can just go to font awesome font awesome and look for oops not the cdn but the actual website font awesome okay so let's look for an icon that we can use for the dashboard or let's say a home icon a home so search home uh, uh copy this icon here and then here and then just change the class to name okay so now we're going to have access to this icon because we're exporting so we can create multiple icons here exporting them with different names okay so in this case i'm just going to to paste in all of the icons we're going to be using so now these are the icons that we're going to be using so i've imported all of these i've created variables for these icons and changed the class to class names okay so now we have all of the icons so what i simply need to do here just import these icons here i'm just going to say transactions uh i need to import import like this transactions from yeah i'm gonna say dot dot utils icons okay transactions uh transactions okay so now we have the icon uh yeah i'm just gonna say trend okay so now it's going to be automatically importing these icons and then i'm gonna say expenses expenses um okay for the dashboard i'm going to i'm going to use a dashboard icon okay so here i'm gonna say dashboard so now we have the icon so now with the menu items i'm gonna go back to the uh to the navigation i'm gonna import menu items menu items so make sure you input menu items there they are so now in here we just simply need to map through map through all of the menu items okay so here i'm just gonna say menu items i'm gonna map i'm gonna get each item okay so for each item i'm going to return i'm going to return an li okay uh, for this li it's going to have a few props so for the key, I'm gonna say item dot id. Okay, so that's for the key. And then um, in the li, in the li itself, I'm going to do item dot icon because we're going to have an icon, icon, and then we're going to do a span in here. A span. Oh my days, a span. And then we're just gonna do the title item dot title okay so now let's save let's see what we have but first off uh, let's create another div below below this here i'm gonna say dot bottom nav okay so i'm gonna do an li uh, and then i'm gonna get a sign out icon and then do sign out like so and then i'm gonna save so we actually need to render uh, the navigation so let's go back the navigation it should be in the main layout 
okay so let's do navigation so I'm going to import navigation from from components uh, navigation components navigation navigation okay now let's save let's go back to the app so as you can see now with the navigation there it is it's showing it's inside the main layout okay so now what we need to do uh, is now let's just style the navigation okay so uh, let's scroll down to the styles down here and start styling okay i'm just going to give it a padding and a width and a height okay so padding width and height i'm also going to give it a border of three pixels solid and color of white and a background okay so okay so we have a background a background color all right so we also need I'm also going to give it a display flex uh, and direction to column and then just file content to space between and then a gap of two RAM. Okay, so there's our nav, nav, okay, navigation. So it looks nice. So now uh, what we need to do is target the user container, the user container. So in the user container, uh, what I'm, go I'm going to give it a height, a display flex, and then align items to center and then a gap of one RAM. Okay. But I also need to change the image. Okay. Uh, let me inspect this. So the image is too big. So I need to change the image size. So I'm going to target the IMG within the user container and then give it a width and a height of 80 pixels and then a border radius of 50% just to make it rounded. Okay. And then I'm just going to do object fit. I'm gonna set that to cover so it doesn't stretch out. I'm gonna save. So there's our image. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a background color, a background, background, background. Uh, I'm gonna do hash. I'm gonna do uh, FC, that's the color that I'm going to give it, FC, uh, F6 f6 and then f9 f9 i think that's the color and then i'm going to give it a border two pixels uh, in the color of white and a shadow so the shadow for the x is zero pixels one pixel for the y 17 pixels for the blur the color is basically black and then the opacity of 0 0.06 save so there is the nice box shadow okay so i'm also going to target the h2 after the image h2 so the color uh, is basically the primary color but i'm just going to use the rgb I'm, i was so lazy to put this into a variable so i was just i'm just going to copy and paste this color here but you can put this into a variable and then you can reuse the variable this is basically the main color okay so this is the main color you can put it into a variable so i'm going to go down to select the p tag I'm going to use the same thing, but I'm just going to change this 2.6, the opacity. Okay. Okay. So now uh, I've changed the opacity. Uh, I'm going to scroll down. So I'm going to look for menu items. I'm going to collapse this for a minute. Menu items. Okay. So now with the menu items, I'm just going to give it a flex of one to fill the, end, the remaining space. And then uh, display flex again, and then a flex direction of column. Okay, so in there, I'm going to target the li. Okay, I'm going to set the display to grid. Okay, and then I'm going to say grid template columns. I'm going to set uh, 40 pixels for the first column and then auto for the remaining. So basically, I want the icon container to be 40 pixels like this one, this container for the icon. Okay, so grid template columns, and then I'm just I'm just gonna align it to center and give it a margin case of pointer, and then a bit of transition. Okay, I'm also gonna give it the same color. The I think it's the primary one. Okay, and then change the opacity. 
now I'm just okay change the opacity to 0.6 to make it lighter okay for some reason I'm gonna inspect this um, li so I sh li should have a display display of grid so it should be not gray but grid okay so now let's save so as you can see it looks pretty nice so far I'm also going to target the i tag the link um, icon and then I'm just gonna give it a same color for the opacity is 0 0.6 but it's still the same primary color okay i was so lazy to create variables you can put this into a variable just in case you want to change it and then a font size of 1.4 rem okay so everything looks nice i just i'm just gonna go to the global style actually i think this font size um this one is too small this one is bigger. Oh, because I'm clamping. So if you're clamping, if you're, because the font size adjusts automatically depending on the viewport, on the viewport size. Okay. Because I'm clamping the font, uh, the minimum is one RAM and then the maximum is 1.2 RAM. All right. So now it looks nice. So what we need to do is click and, you know, showing the active, whatever you click, I want it to be active. So what we need to do is create some state. Um, let's go back up. Let's do a state const. Let's do active. Active and then set active. Okay, so here we're just gonna say use state. Okay. So the active uh, by default, we're going to select uh, the first element. Okay, in our state. The first element let's actually do this active in the app.js okay because we want to we might want to access the active elsewhere okay so that's why let's do it in the app.js or we can just do it in the context if we create some context but let's do it here okay so by default actually let's do one okay let's uh let's set it to one because our id uh what is starting our id starts from one our IDs for the menu item starts from one. So I want to start selecting the one. Okay. So uh, in here, we need to do get use state. We need to make sure we import use state. State. Why is it not importing use state? Use state. It's very strange. I'm just going to do this. Uh, okay. Oh. Very strange. Uh, because we, uh, React is not Im uh, actually imported. It should also auto automatically import anyway. Uh, import. So now let's just import uh, React. React. And then I'm going to import use state. Okay, so we're just going to import this from React. Okay. So now let's save. So yeah, now we should have everything. So now we have this state. So the default value is one, which is the dashboard. It's going to be the default selected, um, selected item. So now basically what we need to do, I'm going to pass in the active in the navigation active equal to active the state and then I'm gonna do set active and then set active okay uh, let's make sure these are curly braces not parentheses okay uh, it shouldn't should be comma separated okay so now uh, we have our state Okay, so when do we want our state to change? When we click the links. So uh, let's go back to the navigation. I'm just gonna destructure. You have active, and then we have set active. Okay, so when we click the link items, we want to change our state. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, so now we have the key. After the key, let's do on click. On click, so on click. I'm just gonna run a callback function. 
So on click, we're going to say set active to the item.id. Okay, so basically we're changing the state to whatever ID we click on. Okay, by default it's on one. Let's say we click on the third item, if the ID is three, uh, we're just gonna put that three into the state. Okay, I'm gonna save. So now I'm gonna save this. Let's go to the view the state when we click these items. So let's go to the uh, components, click the app. Okay, so the state is one by default which is the dashboard, okay, it's one, This the, the ID of this item is one. When I click transactions, it's two, so the state changes to two. When I click I, 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 uh, incomes, it's three, okay, so whatever, I, so it's the ID is corresponding to whatever item we click on, okay, and then we're just updating the state, all right? So uh, what we also need to do is give a class name, class name, so for the class name, I'm going to say if active, active equal to item.id, item.id, okay? And then I'm gonna give it a class of active, okay? And then otherwise nothing, okay? So if active uh, equal to item.id, our ID, if it matches, we're just gonna give the active class. So if the item, whatever item we click on, ID matches the, uh, the the ID here, the active one. So let's say this one is the active one. When I click on one, so one, the ID is gonna match the state, okay? So when I click on this one, the ID is two, it's gonna also match the state because we're updating the state to the ID that of the item we click on. Okay, so what, what what we need to do now is we just need to style the uh, the active. Okay, so after the menu items, after the menu items, um, let's style the active. I'm gonna collapse this. I'm gonna say dot active active. So for the active, I'm just gonna give it a primary color the primary color, or you can use the variable, okay? After that, I'm going to target the i tag and also give it the same color. And then I'm going to create a pseudo uh, element, a before pseudo element, I'm just gonna do before. Okay, so content is going to be an empty string, position absolute left zero and top zero and then also give it a width of four pixels and then uh, give it a height of 100% and then a border, a border radius, okay? I'm gonna save, there it is. So now it's showing uh, this before pseudo element on whatever element we click on. For some reason, right, if this animation is playing, let's say it's on the middle here. When I click something else, it's going to restart. So I don't want to animation to restart like this on re-render. So what we're going to do, we're going to save the memory of the whatever, let's say if it's on the middle here, we're going to use a use memo hook to keep that in memory so it doesn't re-render. So um, we're going to use the use memo hook. So I'm gonna say const, ob memo okay equal to use memo uh, for some reason it's not automatically importing use memo memo okay use memo so now uh, use memo is also going to take in a callback function okay so uh, the dependence arrays it's like similar to use effect, so I want it to be empty. And then here, I'm just gonna render the, I'm actually gonna return, return, uh, I'm going to return the orb. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the orb here. 
and then I'm just gonna say orb memo. Um, what I'm going to do now, and then I'm gonna save. So now, uh, hopefully it should be working, but it seems like it's not working. Uh, use memo, return, hmm, strange. Uh, let me refresh this. Okay, let me inspect. Okay, so now it's working. Yeah, it's working. Uh, okay, so there it is. So even when I change the component, it's, it's, it's not even, you know, refreshing the animation anymore. Okay, I think I have an issue with auto completion. I think I need to close this project and then open it again. Okay. So I'm going to reopen the project uh, because for some reason, the auto completion is going mad. Okay, so there it is. All right, so I'm going to CD backend. I'm going to do npm start in the backend. So let's make sure the server's running. And then now let's do CD front end. Front end. And also let's run the project. Okay, so I don't know for some reason my auto completion was not working properly. Okay, so now. Uh, that's it. So everything works fine. So now let's do this main main container. So for the main, I'm going to create a main. Uh, let's go to the app. So after the navigation, I'm just going to do a main. Okay. So uh, for the main, I'm basically just going to style this in down here. I'm just going to do main. Okay. So I'm going to say flex, I'm going to set it to one because I want to fill the uh, remaining space. Okay. Because we're doing a display flex in the layouts. So if I go to the layouts, we're doing a display uh, flex here. Okay. The navigation and the menu. Okay. So I want the flex, to, I want the main to fill the remaining space. That's why I'm setting flex to one. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a background color and then a, back, a backdrop filter and a border radius of 32 pixels. Okay, and then I'm just going to say uh, set overflow to auto, overflow x to hidden. I'm going to get rid of, um, I'm going to get rid of the scroll bar. Okay, I'm just going to say web kit, uh, web kit, scroll bar. I'm just gonna set the width to zero. All right. So the main should appear some, it's not appearing. Okay. So I'm gonna save. So we have no main because there's no content yet. So we don't see it. Let me try to put some content. Okay. H1, hello. Uh, still, it's not showing. All right. So I'm gonna. Inspect. Oh, because I'm not running the project again. I don't know why I keep forgetting. <laughs> okay, so yeah, now here's the main. Okay, so that's the main. So I'm going to get rid of this. So in the main, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a function called display data. Okay, so I'm going to create a function uh, here to display the data. Const display data. Okay. So this function is going to be responsible for displaying the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say switch, switch, I'm going to say active, okay. So if the active uh, index is close to one, I'm going to render a, co a different component. If it's two, I'm going to render a different component. Okay. So depending on, on the state here, what, whatever value it is. Okay. So I'm going to say case one. If it's, if it's one, okay, I'm going to return. I'm going to create a component 
called dashboard okay dashboard okay so let's actually start with the components let's create a dashboard component uh, this is too big uh, let's create a dashboard component uh, oops let's do dashboard dashboard and then let's do another folder incomes and then let's do another folder and let's do expenses expenses okay now uh, we have the dashboard and the expenses I'm gonna create a new file dashboard to JS react functional component and export okay I'm gonna say const a dashboard styled equal to styled I'm gonna say dot div okay okay so I'm going to copy this dashboard styled and replace and then I'm gonna save I'm gonna copy this dashboard styled and then I'm gonna to go to expenses, expenses to JS, paste uh, F2 to refactor, and then expenses, and then refactor this as well. Expenses, okay, copy, go to incomes, incomes to JS. It should be income to yes you can name it whatever you want uh, income income to yes income okay okay so now uh, we have the component components oops uh, income and then we have the expenses expenses I'm gonna save all right so now uh, I'm gonna render the dashboard okay so if case uh, equal to two I'm just gonna re-render the dashboard because I don't have a lot of components anyway. Okay. Uh, if case, case, like if it's equal to three, I'm going to render the income, income, okay, income. Uh, I'm just going to need to import income from okay components ah uh, components income okay so we have the income and then we have case four the final case uh, we have expenses expenses and then finally, uh, we have the default case. Okay. The default case. Uh, the default. Uh, let's just do the dashboard. Uh, default dashboard. Okay. So, but these should all be returns. Okay. We need to return this. Return. Uh, same for the dashboard. We need to uh, return as well. Okay, like so. All right. So now um, we have display data by default. It's going to be the dashboard, and then uh, if we click, it's going to change to different components. Okay. So income, expenses, is changing based. 
on whatever item we click on, okay? So we need to go into these components. I actually forgot to remember we need an inner layout, okay? In every of these components, we need inner layout. I forgot to add that inner layout. So we need to import inner layout. Okay, so I'm gonna close the layout, the orb. I'm gonna close the navigation menu items. Okay, so let's start with the income. Okay. So I'm gonna do the inner layout. Uh, inner layout, okay. I'm gonna save. So now let's go to the income. That's what we're going to start with, the income item. So um, for the income, we're going to have um, so many things. So let's start with, um, let's start with, I'm thinking what where to begin. Uh, let's do H2 and uh, let's just do, actually H1, let's do incomes. Okay, and then now let's save. So now we have incomes with the title. Okay, uh, I'm also going to change this, uh, the active. Uh, let's go back to the navigation before I forget. So navigation, uh, active. Uh, I, also need, I also need to change the li, okay, uh, on active. Okay, so uh, active color, it's actually set to one. Uh, let me inspect this. Active color. Oh, let me put it to important. Okay, if it's active. Okay, perfect. I'm also gonna do the same for the icon important if it's active and now I'm gonna save okay so now yeah it's uh working pretty nice let's start with the incomes I think that's the easiest way to go I'm gonna close again the navigation okay perfect so now we're in the incomes uh, let's start with the content so dot income content so I'm gonna do a form container container in here, and then after that I'm gonna do incomes income content. Uh, below that I'm gonna do incomes. Okay, so I'm gonna do incomes. We're going to be still in the income content, by the way. So I'm gonna do incomes. Okay. So here we're going to map through all of the incomes uh, that we have, okay? But what we need is a, st a global state, okay? So we can access whatever incomes we have from the API. So let's go to the context and create a global context, okay? Context to JS. Okay, so the global context, you can name this whatever you want or just global. That's entirely up to you. All right. So uh, we're just going to create a, a single context. I'm going to say const. I'm going to say global context equal to react. We need to import react, react dot create context. Okay, so don't forget to import react. Okay. For some reason, it's not importing React. Import React. Okay, so now we're creating a context. Uh, we're gonna say export const. Uh, let's name this global provider. You can name this whatever you want. It's, the namings are entirely up to you. Okay, and then uh, it's gonna take in the children. So the children is going to be our whole app, okay? The children, in here, well, we're just going to return, okay? 
uh, what are we going to return? Uh, we're going to say return, and then in the return, we're just going to say global context, okay, and then we're going to say dot provider, okay, and then here we're just going to do the children. We're going to pass in the children because we're going to wrap this global provider on our app, okay. Um, declaration statement is required. Okay, what is the issue here? Return. Oops. Yeah, I'm just trying to see uh, where, where I've gone wrong. Okay, so. Oh. Okay, so the brackets were wrong. Get rid of this. Okay, so now save. Okay, so in here, I'm, I'm going to have uh, some state. I'm also going to import Axios, okay? So import Axios from Axios, okay? Because we're going to do some, we're going to do some requests on our server, okay? So I'm also going to create a base URL, uh, a base URL variable. I'm just gonna create it here, base URL. So our, it's gonna be 5,000. We're listening to port 5,000, if you remember. If I go to Postman, uh, it's port 5,000, okay? That's our port, so this is our base URL. And then we're just going to do some requests, okay? So now, uh, let's go down here. I'm gonna say const incomes, incomes, I'm gonna say set incomes. This is just an uh, initial state, okay? So once we get our data, we're just going to put it into this state, okay? By default, it's going to be an empty array. And then I'm going to have another, let's go expenses, and then set expenses, 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 okay? It's going to be an empty array initially as well. Uh, basically, I'm also going to do an error, error state. So if there's an error, uh, we're going to create a state for it. Uh, and then we can do some conditionals if there's an error. Use state. And then we're going to set that to now. Okay. So uh, let's start doing the, uh, let's start with the actual adding, adding the items to the server, to the, I mean, database. So let's do const add uh, let's do add income okay and then it's going to be an asynchronous and then it's going to be an error function okay or you, or you can just do this uh, okay so now uh actually this one is going to take uh, an it's going to take an income so let's do income because we want to send something, we want to send some data, whatever data that we pass into the inputs, okay? So, so here I'm gonna say const response, response equal to await, await. So our method is post, okay? Uh, it's gonna be actually await axios, axios the post. That's our method, okay? So the first thing that we're going to take is the URL, okay, the URL is going to be the base, base URL, base, and then the base URL, and then we're going to add the endpoint, okay, which is add income, I think, that's the endpoint, to send something to the database, and then we're going to uh, send the payload, so the payload is going to be the income, whatever is coming from the input, okay, and then I'm just going to uh yeah do a catch if there's an error okay i'm just gonna say if there's an error uh if there's an error it takes in a callback function okay so if there's an error we're just gonna say set error the state and then we're just gonna say error dot uh response uh response dot data dot message that's what i've named the error 
So you could have named the, the error, error or I've named it message if you remember. Message. Okay, I'm gonna save. So I'm gonna send this function. I'm gonna say value um, here. I'm gonna say the name of the function is add income. Okay, add income. Okay, because I'm going to, to be adding more files here later. So here, let's just check. Let's just stay with the add income. Okay, so now we have the uh, the add income method. So this method is going to be responsible for us to send the items to the database. Okay, so now what we're going to do is let's go to the index. Uh, we need to set this global context. So global context, oops, we've named the global provider global provider. So make sure you import the global provider from the context. So the children is going to be the app. Okay. So make sure you wrap the entire app uh, with the global provider. So how do we know it's working? Well, let's try to send a random value here. I'm just going to say, uh, hello. Okay. I don't know if I can actually do this. I'm going to get rid of the I'm going to get rid of the add. I'm just going to put hello here. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the app. Okay. I'm going to say use. Okay. So for the app, I need to actually create a method, uh, a function that's going to allow me uh, to use this context because I have no access to this context. Okay. So down here, I'm going to say export const, I'm going to say use, I'm going to say global, global context. Okay, so I want to have access to this uh, context anywhere that I want to access it. Okay. Uh, what's going on with this? Error, export, wait a minute. It's the should be outside here. I didn't realize it was inside. Okay, so yeah, it should be outside. So here we're basically just going to return, return, and then we're just gonna say use context, okay? So make sure you import use context, and then you, you put in the context that you've created with this global or whatever the name, whatever name you've named it, okay? So now in the app, what I can do is I can just say use uh, global context. Okay, so make sure you import the use global context. Okay, so I'm gonna say global equal to use global context. Okay, so here I'm gonna cog global. Okay, to see, let's see what we have. Let's go to the let's go to the console f12. Okay, so nothing in the console. Okay, so I need to be in the incomes actually to for us for the console to work. So if I go to the incomes, as you can see, hello, we have access to the actually I need to, to refresh not to be in the incomes. So I need to you know navigate through these uh, pages. Okay, so the hello is working. Okay, so our context is working. So now what we need to do is I'm gonna send in the function add income. So I want to access add income in here. I'm going to say use global context. I'm going to destructure. We're going to have a lot of values. Okay. So I'm going to get add income. Okay. So uh, let's start with the form. Okay. So I'm going to go to the components. I'm going to say form. And then I'm going to do form.js react functional component and export all right so uh for the form um, um let's do, 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 do let's start with the styles const form styled okay you go to styled dot form 
Okay, so I'm just going to paste in a lot of styles just to make everything quick. Okay, so now we're creating a form. Um, I'm just going to replace this. All right. So in the form, I'm just, let's add the markup. So I'm going to uh, do an input control, dot input control. And then we are going to have the input. Input, let's create some state first because we need some values. Okay. So I'm going to say const input, input state. And then we're going to set input state, state, okay, equal to use state, use state. Uh, by default, uh, the title, everything is going to be empty. The title, date, and everything is going to be empty, okay. And I want to destructure this from the input state, the, these values I've created here. Okay, which are going to be empty initially. So I'm destructing title, uh, these values here from the input state, which is going to be empty. Okay, so here I'm just basically going to set the props. I'm going to say value. So value now for the for this input uh, is going to be uh, the title. Okay, title. And then I'm um, going to set the name. Make sure the val the name is same to title. Name is set to title. And then placeholder. I'm I'm going to say equal to salary. Salary title. I don't know. You can name this whatever. Okay. I'm gonna save. So the I'm gonna also do on change. On change. So for on change, I'm going to do handle input input. So for the input, I'm just going to put give it a name. So make sure the, the name here matches the handle input, which we need to create a function for that. So here I'm going to say const handle input. So, so the handle input function uh, is going to take in two things. So the name which we're putting here in this function here, the name of the on change. So it's going to be dynamic, whatever name we, we whatever input, input we create, we can just give it a name and then it's just going to change dynamically. So name, so, okay. So another function, so this one is a callback function. So also an, we need an event. Okay. So, the, okay. So now in here, uh, we're going to say set input state, Okay, so the input state, uh, we're going to create an object and then we're going to get the existing input state values, existing input state, and then um, the name, the name of the input, whatever name we pass in, and then we're just going to say e.target, dot target, dot value. Okay, so the value of the event. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, that's it for the handle input. So uh, on change, we, we're just handling the input. That's what we're basically doing in the on change here. All right. So uh, what we need to do is just duplicate this a few times with different values. Okay, so input control, and then just duplicate. And then here is the amount, the value set to amount. So make sure the name matches the handle input name here so the name of the the prop name prop make sure it matches okay i cannot stress enough make sure the name matches here okay the id doesn't matter make, just make sure the name matches okay so i'm going to do another input control dot input control so here i'm going to do a date Okay, so we're going to do a date picker. So we actually need to import date picker from the package we've installed. Uh, the name of the package is called date picker. Okay, so here I'm just going to say import uh, date 
picker from I think it's called react date picker like this okay react date picker yep that's the name I'm also going to import some styles from date picker so here's the how you import the styles react date picker dist and then select the import the styles okay the default styles so in here in the input control that's where I want to uh, basically I want to um, why am I using so many fillers I want to add the date picker uh, date picker okay so I'm just gonna give it an ID of date and then the placeholder uh, let's do a placeholder text placeholder text I'm gonna say enter a date okay and then uh, let's do a selected selected let's do the date so remember we're distracting the date from the state okay and then we we'll do date format um for the date format i would want to do day first uh let's say day and then we do the month and then we do the year okay after that i'm gonna do on change so on change it's gonna take in a callback function okay callback function i'm gonna do date like this okay uh so basically here on change we're going to uh, send the date we're going to change the state so we're going to say set input state we're going to change the input state uh, of sending the date as well whatever date is coming from the package okay i'm going to get the previous uh, values in the state and then i'm going to do date i'm just going to send in the date okay uh, coming from the package okay so that's what we need now uh, we just need to close okay so now let's close so now we have a date picker i'm gonna save so we need one more thing actually not one more thing we need uh, quite a few we need some options okay i'm gonna paste in the options here i'm gonna collapse this it's another input control so the options so it's basically um an input control again with another class name called select so it's just a select item here select uh, the handle input the handle change is the handle input with a name of category and make sure the name is category matches the on change i cannot stress this enough if it doesn't it's not going to work okay so select yeah, it's going to be required value is set to category because we're going to change the category okay and then the name is set to category the on change handle input category okay and then here is just some options you can add random options you want also the value make sure you because we need to access these values later on okay so you put make sure you put the values that make sense you just put some uh, options here okay after that i'm just going to add in a button submit submit uh, btn here i'm just going to add a button okay i'm going to say add income okay that's it that's for the form uh we just need to do on submit uh we just need to create another function called handle submit okay so let's create a function to handle the submission i'm going to say const handle submit so for the handle submit uh here i'm gonna also get the uh, event event object oops i'm gonna also get the event and then here i'm just gonna say e dot prevent default for, uh, to prevent the refresh okay dot prevent default all right so remember now uh, we need to get the add income from the state so i'm gonna say use uh, from the context i mean use global context okay so here i'm gonna also destructure 
uh, the add income add income okay so we're destructuring add income and then add income here we need to send a payload so the payload we're gonna send is going to be the input state okay the input state is the payload we're gonna send because in the handle submit when we submit uh, in the handle input the state is going to change it's going to get the values of whatever we're typing in the input okay and then after that when we submit we're just going to send whatever those values are uh, this payload here the input state okay uh, using the add income uh, the add income function which we've done in the global context which is doing a post request okay so that's that uh, now we just need to get this form in the form container in here uh, we just need to say form form okay so make sure you import the form i have auto import so now save so it's compiling yeah so now let's go back so hopefully we should have a form so there's our form so and uh, now what we need to do uh we're we're console logging the state that's why now what we need to do we need to go to components uh, uh now click on the global provider i don't know why it's taking ages to load uh timeout uh i think we have an issue somewhere i'm gonna refresh again in comes actually components uh we need the form component click on the form that's that's where our state is so the title now when i change now as you can see the state is changing so what we basically need to do is send this payload to the database so i'm just going to type some gibberish here and then i'm just going to put an amount 40 and then now when i click as you can see the date picker is working okay because we're using the package and then when i click the date now it's putting inserting a date so here there you see our date is added in our state so category here is we have a select and then here we can select uh, select stocks and then now a moment of truth when i click add income hopefully it should add to the database so when i click add income i uh, don't know if it works let's go to the console okay so there seems to be an issue uh, with the add income let's see what's going on let's go to network uh network okay click here all fields are required okay there seems to be an issue i don't know oh because we're missing something we're missing a description so it says all fields are required because we have not put a description okay so the description is just uh go to the form uh, do another input control after the select another input control and then you put a text area input control and then you just put a text area inside and then the name is set to description and then the value is description which is coming from the state and then a placeholder of add a reference and then uh, columns uh, 30 and then rows 4 on change handle input we're using the same function but a different name okay because it's dynamic so the name make sure it matches the name of the element you are using okay so we're using a text area the name is description and then the handle input is description so now save so hopefully we should have a there's our description so now i can say hello it's not hello whatever this is hello okay so now i can say add income so now as you can see income added so that means uh the income is added to our database so let's try to do a get request here so get uh let's do get expand um uh, i think it's incomes get incomes so as you can see it says uh hello here this is what we've added recently just now okay so when I add something else again, 
uh, it should show, okay? I'm gonna say testing the add. Okay, I'm gonna say add income again. So here it says income added. When I go to postman, uh, there it is. Okay, so when I do a get request again, there it is. Okay, so everything is perfect. So now uh, let's go to finish styling this. Okay, uh, form. Okay, so now we just need to style this. I'm gonna do display flex and then um, flex selection to column and I'm going to select the input. I'm gonna select the input text area, text area and then the select, the select. I'm going to do a font family of inherit and give it a padding and a border and a border radius, okay? Font family inherit, font size inherit, outline to none. I'm also gonna set resize to none. I'm gonna give it a box shadow, the one we've used before. Uh, you can put this box shadow into a variable because we are going to reuse this a lot. And then I'm going to say end. I'm gonna say placeholder. I'm going to select the placeholder. I want to give it a color, which is the primary color, but reduce the opacity to 40%. Okay, so there it is. It looks pretty nice at the moment. And then I'm going to collapse and target the input control. Input control. Um, for the input control, I'm gonna set the width to 100%, okay? Um, I'm actually gonna target the input, input and set the width to 100%, okay? I'm going to select the select, selects. I'm gonna do flex, okay, display flex, and then uh, put to end, okay? I want it to be at the end, like here, okay? So let's keep going. And then I'm going to select, I'm going to do select and give it the same color and then change the opacity to 40%. And then I'm going to target the on focus, focus and active and change the color to one. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to target the submit, submit BTN. So for the submit button, I'm going to select the button. And then I'm going to give it a box shadow. You can put this box shadow into a variable and then we're going to put a hover effect. On hover, we, we can use the variable color green. Okay, so there it is on hover. So now I'm going to create a new component. This is going to be a button component. So in the button, I'm gonna do button, do JS. Okay, so for the button, I'm going to say button, button, here, yeah, I'm gonna say button as well, button styled. So make sure this is a button. Okay, we don't need the inner layout in here. So this button is going to have a, a few props, okay? So it's, it's going to have quite a few props actually. Okay, so we're going to have the name, we're going to have the icon prop, and then we're going to have on click, and then we're going to have a, a background, BG, and then we're going to have a button padding, B pad, and then we're going to have a color, color prop, and then we're going to have a, a button radius. Okay, on click, so, yeah, let's do, uh, let's do style. Okay, style equal to, let's style the button. Okay, so background, back, for some reason there's no auto completion. I'm just gonna paste in the styles then. Background, okay. Uh, I think it's because <laughs> there's something weird going on here. Styled styled dot button okay styled button so now um 
we have these tiles. Uh, I'm just gonna put an icon here, the prop icon, and then uh, we're gonna do a name. I put the name. So now let's do these tiles for the button. Okay, I'm gonna give it a font family and a flex and a gap of 0.5 RAM and outline of none. Okay, and just and then finally a transition and a cursor to pointer. That's it for the button. So basically, we also need to do the on click. Actually, let's do on click. On click. We're just gonna run the on click uh, function that is coming from the prop. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that's for the button. So we just need to go back to the form. Uh, instead of doing a button like this, we just need to run the component button and give it some props. Okay. Okay, so now we just give the um, the button uh, some props, whatever props that we want. Okay, so in this case, let's start with the name. So this button is going to be called Add Income. Okay, so name. Let's go to Add Income. You can name this whatever you want. Okay, and then the icon. I'm just going to paste in the rest of the props. I'm gonna get rid of the this one. So the icon that I'm going to be using is called plus. So make sure you import the plus from the icons. Okay, you choose so plus. So make sure you import like this because it's a named ex, uh, export. So we need to import like this. Okay. So now um, let's save. So we should have a button. So there it is. There's our button. It says uh, add income. Okay. So yeah, we have the, so now we just need to focus on getting the, the data. Okay. So we're done with our form. So we just need to get the actual data now. Okay. So let's uh, close the form. I'm going to close the button. I'm going to close the index. I'm also going to close the dashboard. We will use it later. Uh, income okay so yeah let's go back to the incomes income so we need to do a get request in the global context we need to get uh, we need to get the incomes okay so we can uh, map through the incomes all right so after this I'm gonna say I'm gonna copy this I say get get income, okay? Get income. It's not gonna take in the parameter anymore. Okay, so now uh, in get income, we're gonna do. I'm gonna copy this. Okay, so base URL. We're gonna do Axios dot get. So this is a get request. Okay, we don't need the payload. So I think I can't remember the name of the the name. I think it's get incomes. Okay. It's get incomes. And then we're just gonna set uh, set incomes the state to response to data. Response to data, okay. So we're setting the states, the incomes to respond. So now I want to access the incomes here, the state, and also the get incomes. Get incomes. So here we need to send this get incomes and then the actual incomes. Okay. I'm going to send it. I want to access this in here. Okay. So. I'm going to access the incomes, incomes, and also the get incomes. Okay. Get incomes. So let's actually see what's going on if we do the get incomes here. Get incomes. And then let's COG uh, response response 
let's see your response to data okay so now let's uh let's go back to the website and press f12 console as you can see we're getting our the um we're getting our data there's our data here but it keeps like running like crazy so we we don't want to run this function here okay so i just wanted to show you that we're getting the data okay so uh what we can actually do i'll just run a use effect here a use effect use effect just to show you it takes in a callback function let's do it on initial render on initial render i'm going to just get incomes okay i'm gonna save i'm gonna go to incomes and initial render so now as you can see we have three items so because we have three items in our database we're getting those items so i want to map through these items okay so now uh when incomes change okay also when incomes change i want to re-render okay so now uh something weird happening here let's leave it on <laughs> let's only leave it on uh, initial render okay so and then let's do incomes in here we will just want to map through our incomes okay so i'm gonna say incomes dot map uh, i'm gonna get the individual individual uh, income okay so in here i'm just going to destructure uh, everything from the income or our properties okay destructure the properties i'm just going to return um i'm going to return an income item which i don't have yet so i need to go to components and then income item i hate keep creating components i'm going to try to limit creating new components income item to js okay so in the income item i'm just gonna do react functional component and then export okay so in here uh, we're just going to do the standard income item styled styled equal to styled dot div okay this is the standard we've been doing this forever okay i'm gonna replace this okay so now in here in the income styled i'm going to have an icon i'm gonna say dot icon section okay and then i'm gonna have the content dot content content all right so in the content i'm gonna have an h5 h5 i'm gonna say title because i'm going to have some props title i'm just gonna add those props in okay so the props are going to be id all of the props and some methods okay so we have delete item uh with uh, id title amount date all of those uh props we're going to do them when we're rendering the item okay so i'm just uh, putting the names of the props up there so now uh let's in the content and then we have the inner content inner content and then in the inner content we have the text we have the text and then we're going to have a p tag i'm gonna say uh ten dollars that's the, going to be the amount so uh, we're going to use an icon a dollar icon a dollar icon make sure you import the icon and then i'm gonna uh, say 50 45 okay so that's the amount and then we have another p 
and then a date a date gonna be calendar calendar okay so make sure you import the icon okay and then uh, here we're just gonna do a date a date okay so we have a date and then we have another p tag so here it's gonna be comment comment okay uh, comment so that's the icon okay and then we're going to have the text which is going to be description okay description so the comment icon and the text description okay after that uh, we're going to have uh, we're going to have a p um, a button container okay so dot btn a con container and then here I'm just gonna render the button the same button okay here I'm just gonna put some props okay for the button I'm just gonna paste in those props okay so I'm going to get rid of the on click for now and then the icon I'm gonna input the trash icon so make sure you import those icons the ones we're using in here so here are the icons we're using. So just import them. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to save. So I'm just going to style this, whatever I have in here now. Okay. I'm just going to give it a background and a padding and a margin. And a box shadow. The one we've been using. So make sure you save this into a variable. And then I'm just going to do a flex and give it a color. Okay. So this is the item here. So the item we're working on right now is this item. Oops, when I go to incomes, it's this in item right here. That's the one I'm working on right now. Okay. Uh, after that, I'm going to target the icon. The icon. And then I'm going to give it a width and a height of 80 pixels and then a border radius of 20 pixels. Okay. And then a display flex and just like on the center and align to center. And then I'm going to target the eye tag and then give it a font size of 2.6 RAM. Okay, that's for the eye tag. So after that, I'm going to target the content. The content. So for the content, I'm going to do, do a flex one to fill the remaining space and do a uh, display flex and give the flex direction to column. And then I'm going to target the H5. Okay. And then a font size of 1.3 RAM, and then also give it a padding left. Okay, so here the H5 is this one. Okay, so that's what we're doing here the H5. Okay, so I'm going to give it a before pseudo element, which is this one. This with the green background here, it's called an indicator. Okay, that's what I've named the prop. So I'm going to do and before I'm going to do position absolute 0.8 RAM width and height and then border radius 50% to make it rounded. Okay. So for the back, uh, for the background color, I'm going to pass it as a prop. Okay. So that's the indicator prop. So as you can see, I have the indicator, indicator color here. So I'm going to create a prop called indicator, indicator, and then I'm going to pass in the indicator color. So now I just need to access that prop in here. So I'm going to do back background. So props, props, and then I'm going to do props dot indicator, indicator. Okay, that's the background color, the indicator. All right, so that's for the content. I'm gonna do the inner content. All right. So uh, after the H5, I'm gonna collapse this. I'm gonna do the inner content. The inner content. Okay, so for the inner content, it's basically the same thing, display flex and uh, centering this and the space between and then I'm going to target the text 
it's also a display flex and give it a gap of 1.5 RAM. Okay, and then I'm also going to tag the P tag in there and do a display flex and give it a primary color. Okay, like that. And then I'm gonna save. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to render that item. Okay, so to render the item, uh, to render the item, let's uh, let's go to the income. I'm gonna say return income item. Okay, so now we're returning that item. So now we just need to pass in some props. Okay, so some props. I'm just gonna actually close this first, and then now I just need to do the props. So the props, we have the key. So for the key, I'm gonna do the ID. Okay, that's going to be our key. And then uh, we're going to have the actual ID. So we need to pass all of these props here. Okay, so I'm just gonna pass paste the props. So we have the ID. I'm also going to do an indicator. Okay, so the indicator, just give it a color. And then I'm gonna save. Okay. So there is our items, there they are, okay? So now we just need to display flex the input and these items, okay? So uh, scroll down to income styled. So we just need to display flex and then say overflow to auto, okay, like this. So display flex, I'm gonna save. Okay, and then I'm gonna say total income. I'm gonna select uh, this one. No, not total income. I'm gonna select the income content. The income content, this one, the form container, and the actual uh, incomes. I'm gonna display flex those. Okay, so I'm gonna say dot income content. Okay, I'm going to display flex and give it a, a gap of two RAM. I'm gonna save. Okay, so there it is. So I want this item to fill the remaining space here. So I'm going to set the incomes, incomes, the flex to one, okay? Incomes, I'm gonna set flex to one to fill the remaining space. Flex, I will set that to one. Okay, so now it's filling the remaining space. So now what's missing, we're missing the icon here. Okay, so for the icon, we're basically going to do a switch. Okay, so we're going to switch um, uh, based on the input. Okay, so if we go back here, so based on this uh, select, uh, what's the select? So based, we're going to switch based on the uh, value here. Okay. So that's how we're going to display the icon. So let's say if the category is salary, we're going to have a different icon. If the category is freelance, we're going to have a different icon uh, depending, uh, depending on the uh, category. Okay, so let's go to the income item. So we need to do the icons here. Uh, okay, so these props, we have not used these props yet. We're going to use them later. So uh, down here, down here, we need to do uh, some icons. I'm gonna do const, const, I'm gonna say category. I'm gonna do category icon, okay? So it's gonna be a function, category icon, a function. Okay, so we're going to switch here based on the category. So here, this is the category, okay? So each, so let's, as you can see here, the icons are different depending on the category, okay? So we're going to switch based on the category so switch, category is coming from the props. If you remember, category is here, coming from the props. Okay. So we're switching 
based on category because when I, when we create an item we add a category okay we select a category and put it there okay so these are our pre-built categories okay so we're switching based on the category if the category is something we do this if it's this did we do this okay so the case the case if the category is, is equal to salary okay so case salary salary okay we're basically going to return an icon return so we're going to return money 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 icon okay and then uh, we're going to do another case so case uh, freelancing freelancing okay freelancing we're going to return uh, an icon called freelance so make sure you import these icons here as you can see my app my it's i have auto import coming from the utils okay so the case the category case so when i go to the form as you can see so make sure the cases um have these values here the value okay is the category okay this value here okay category so these values are the ones i'm switching on if it's this this or this or this because uh here the value is stocks the value is not freelancing bitcoin so if the value is equal to one of these you know display uh the icons accordingly okay so i'm going to do all of the cases so i freelancing i'm going to uh, paste all of the remaining cases okay so what i'm going to do is just import the icons stocks import the icon users and then i'm going to import bitcoin and then i'm going to import card and then yt and then and then we have a default okay so which is an empty string okay so that's the um icons the category icon we also need to do one more so we have expense icon okay so it's basically doing the same thing uh, another function i'm just gonna paste the icon so we have uh, expense expense category expense because we're going to have the expense page it's going to have different categories okay so i'm just going to say uh, set uh do the icons here again i'm gonna do book i'm gonna do food i'm going to do medical medical let's do tv we're importing these icons by the way so don't forget to import them or you, you, you could you could have been using these icons differently from the way i'm doing okay and then we have circle okay so now we've imported the icons now we just need to add the icons in the icon so here in the icon so i'm gonna say if type okay type equal to expense if you remember when we created our server um, our model we gave uh, the models different let me go back to the back end so in the expense model so the type is a string the default is income in the should be expense for this one expense the, that's the type in the income the type is set to income and then in the expense is set to expense okay the type so this is the type so uh, we're getting the type it's coming from our props as well so the prop type okay so all of this is coming from our data so the type so if type equal to expense so if the type equal to expense i'm gonna display 
I'm gonna display the expense uh, expense cut category icon okay else I'm gonna display the category icon okay so depending if it's expense or if it's um, incomes we're going to display the icons accordingly okay I don't know what this is it's missing an icon by the way um, there's something wrong with one of the one of the these cases uh, so this is a catty expense category wait a minute Bitcoin freelancing bank transfer okay expense and then income so this is for the income category so one of these is wrong so we have other which is uh, YouTube bank okay so let's go to the form and double check this uh -huh, let's open form so let's double check so salary uh, we have salary uh, freelancing so make sure the spellings are correct freelancing uh, freelancing investment form it says investments okay so make sure the names match okay now save the icon still doesn't show okay I don't think it's for the investments it's for something else and then we have stocks uh, stocks Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin yep and then we have bank yep YouTube YouTube yep other ah it's very strange one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight ah something is wrong I don't even know which one salary freelancing anyways it doesn't matter I don't even know what icon is this the ca what category is this but we're going to delete it anyway we're going to see what, what, what's going on but yeah so now we can add items I'm gonna say add item I'm gonna say amount to 40 and then put in a date I'm gonna do Bitcoin Bitcoin yep I'm gonna add income something is wrong I'm gonna inspect to see why so I'm gonna add again income something's wrong okay uh, let's go to network network uh, income added oh because we we're, we're not refetching this data okay so when I refresh uh, when I go to incomes it's there okay we are not refetching the data when we add okay so we, that's what we need to do we need to basically uh, refetch the data okay so let's go back to incomes uh, on submit form uh, handle submit okay so in here we need to get incomes okay so add income after that we need to get incomes okay we need to refresh the data so I'm gonna say add to salary let me say 40 a date and then I'm gonna put investments test I'm gonna add uh, test two is added. Wait, no ways. F twenty again. 
Where's the item I've just added? I'm gonna... Uh, add. Okay, so there's the item. Okay, so... Uh, let's go to the use effect. Uh, use effect. Where's the use effect? Use effect. Use effect. Get incomes. Actually, let's do an incomes change. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So now it's instant. Perfect. So now what we need to do is figure out. Oh, I think the investments one. Is the one that's missing an icon so uh, let's go back here to income item investments copy this go to the form yep this the spellings were incorrect now I'm gonna save uh, wait a minute Invest investments. Copy this. Go back. Investments. I'm gonna paste this. I'm gonna save now. Uh, still the icons not showing. This is very, very strange. Investments. Okay, we can fix it later anyway. Uh, now, let's focus on delete. Okay, so for the delete, let's go to the global, global context. It's a const delete. We're going to delete the income. It's going to take an ID. Okay. So I'm going to say const response We go to. So make sure this is an async. So here we're going to do axios dot delete. Okay, ID. So now we're just going to pass in the ID. Okay. That's it. We don't need to do much in here for the delete. We just uh, pass in uh, the ID. Okay. All right. So <laughs> uh, we also need to pass in the base URL. Uh, copy this. Okay. Copy. And then you pass in the URL, and uh, now you just are passing the endpoint, which is delete, uh, delete income, income, that's the endpoint, delete income, and then I just do the ID now, okay? Just do the ID. I'm gonna send, send this, delete income. Okay, perfect. So now I've access to the delete income. I want to access, actually, I want to access the delete income. Um, where, where should I do the delete? In the item, actually. What is it? Yeah, in here. Okay, but I'll do the delete item in the income itself. Okay. So on click, that's where I would do the, I'll do the function. Okay. So I'll do delete income. I want to say delete item. I want to say delete income. Okay. So make sure you get the delete income 
from the global context. Okay, so delete item. We have access to the, this delete item prop in here. Delete item. Okay, so in the button, we're gonna do on click. And then we're gonna do a callback function. Okay, so for the callback function, and then we're gonna pass in the ID. Okay, now save. All right, so I'm gonna delete, 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 delete. Okay, because uh, we are re rendering whenever the income changes, the use effect is firing. Okay, I'm gonna say test icon, icon. I'm gonna say 100. I'm gonna put in a date. And then I'm gonna try investments to see if icon works. Icon works. Add. So now the icon works. Okay. The icon works. So now what I want to do is if I put a lot of text like this, I'm gonna say add again. I'm gonna select, make sure you select something. I'm gonna, oops, something's wrong. Uh okay. Oh whoa 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 <laughs> Okay something is wrong Let's go to the where are we doing the use effect incomes I'm gonna get rid of this Okay uh, let's save Refresh, go to the incomes. I'm gonna add something. I'm gonna say hello. Amount, I'm gonna say 100. I'm gonna put a date. And then I'm gonna select. Let's say we, if we were to add a lot of text like this, I'm gonna add. Uh, server error. What's going on? Okay, so another server error. It doesn't say much. Okay, in comes, I'm gonna add another one. Put a date, select, add income. Now it works. Okay, so I'm going to refresh this. Okay. Get incomes. Get incomes. When the income, first, I don't know why it keeps re. Let me see. Let me try this. Doing the same thing. It's very strange. Let me see something. Let me clear the console. Let me see here what's going on here. It's doing the same thing. Okay, so I'm back. So now um, I've slept for like seven hours. Okay, so I just had a coffee, so now I'm ready. My mind is fresh now. Uh, let's see what's going on. So when I go to the incomes, it's make, making these crazy requests. Okay, so let's go to the to the use effect and get rid of this. We only want to get this on initial render. So we, we want to call this function when we create uh, when we create something in here. Okay. So um, I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, so, uh, let me see why it's not working. Okay, yeah, because we need to refresh for it to work. Okay, so we want to call the get incomes when we delete something or when we create something. So let's go to our global context. Uh, when we create, 
when we add the incomes, we need to call the get incomes. Okay. So we need to call the, oops, let me disable this. We need to call the get incomes. And also when we delete, after deleting, we need to call the get incomes as well. Okay. So I'm going to save. So let's go to the incomes. Let me see if we are making some crazy requests. Okay, so let's go to the network. Uh, network. Okay, nothing happens. So I'm just gonna add a random, a random entry. Okay, so random entry. And then I'm just gonna put an amount and then a date. Uh, I'm just gonna say this is salary. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add income. As you can see, now it's adding the entry. And also when we delete, it's instantly de deleting the item. Okay, so now what we want to do is calculate the total, the total salary. Okay, so to calculate the total, let's create a, a new function to calculate that total. Okay, so go the, all the way down at the bottom. Um, here, what, what can we call this function? Let's name it total salary. I think it makes more sense or uh, actually this is uh, salary, total income. Let's name it total income, okay? Uh, const total income. Okay, so it's gonna be an arrow function. So in here, we want to create a variable, total income, we're using let because we're going to change this variable. Okay, uh, total, okay, yeah, total income, we can name it the same, it doesn't matter, equal to uh, zero, okay, initially it's going to be zero, and then we're going to get the incomes, and then we're going to map, okay, we're going to loop through the incomes, not map, map through the incomes, okay, so I'm just going to get the individual income, I don't know why my spelling is so bad. Okay, so the individual income. So here, we're just gonna say total uh, plus equals to income dot amount. Okay, income dot amount, amount. So this should be our total price. So we're looping through uh, the incomes. Okay, so each income, um, there's an amount. Okay, so I'm just going to add uh, the total income uh, with the amount. So this plus equals, is basically means tot, uh, total e income equal to total income plus like this, okay? That's what we're basically doing here. I'm just gonna save this. Uh, let's just return this actually. Return total income, okay? So let me try to run total income and see if we can get anything in the console. Okay, I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna do CLG. Oops, CLG, and then I'm going to paste in total income here. Let's go to the console. Uh, let's go to incomes, and then it says 120, that's our total income, okay? So if you had 45 plus 45, uh, this should be 90, and then plus 45, I don't, I don't even know what, what is 90 plus 45. Uh, let's console, let's do 90 plus 45, it's 135. So for some reason, I don't know why I say 120. Uh, Let me see if this is the correct one. Yep, yeah, same 120. Hmm. Very strange. I have no idea why it's showing 120 though. Uh, amount 40. Okay, this one is saying 40 for the amount. 40. 
I think I need to 40. And then this one is 40, 80. And then, so yeah, it's 120, but I don't know why it's showing 45 here. It's strange. Let me try to refresh this. I have no idea why it's showing 45. What am I even putting? Oh, it's because I've I've added um, fake data earlier. So let's go to the, let me get the total income. I'm also going to send it here. Yeah. So if I go to the income, I've put some dummy data in the income item. Okay. So I need to change this dummy data here and put and put the actual amount, okay? So uh, for the amount, uh, we just get it from the prop, okay? And then we put the amount of that money. Uh, get rid of this, and then here we just say amount. Okay? So now let's go back to the incomes. So now as you can see, it's showing the correct amount now, okay? So yeah, 120 is correct. So now we have the total income. Uh, we need to, we need to put the total income somewhere here at the top. Okay, as you can see here, the total income is here. Okay. So our total income, we are going to do this in the income in here. After the incomes, so create an H2 and then name it total income. Okay, so total income, and then I'm just gonna write total um, income. And then I'm going to do a span in here. So in, in the span, I'm just going to do a total income. I'm just going to put a dollar sign. And then I'll put total income. I'll call the function. So make sure you are um, importing total income. You are distracting total income from the use global. Okay, now save. Uh, let's go back. So there's our total income. Now we just need to style this, this thing. So copy. Now the total income, we need to go into the styles. Okay, so up here, just do total income. Uh, we're just gonna give it a background color and a flex and a border. Uh, okay, so display flex, adjust for content and align items to center. And then gives a box shadow, the one we've been using before. So you should have put that into a variable by now, this box shadow, we've been using it and the border radius and the margin and the padding. Okay, so there's our total income. Okay, I'm going to style the span uh, within the H2. So for the span, I'm going to give it a font size of 2.5 RAM and then a color of green. Okay, and then a font weight of 800. Okay, so there it is. Uh, I'm just going to go to the global style. I'm going to style all of the uh, headers. Okay, so for the headers, I'm just going to give them a background color. Okay, so let's do H1. H2, H3, H4, uh, 5, H6. Okay, so I'll give it a color of primary. Okay, so let's do color. Uh, var. And then we'll just put the primary color. Okay, so there it is. So now the color is set to primary. We have the total. Uh, it's same as here, okay? So now, uh, what we need to do, uh, we can add the incomes, we can delete all of these incomes, okay? Now, what we need, um, let me add a new item. New item, I'm gonna put 100 and a date. Select option, I'm gonna say investment. Investment. And then I'm gonna add, so there it is. Uh, we need to clear the input, okay? And as you can see, the total income is also updating. Okay, Bitcoin. Okay. Just keep changing to see if the icons are working. 
freelancing. Okay, so yeah, everything works pretty good. The the income changes. It's quite instant. Perfect. So we have our feature our features ready. So now what we need to do is just we need to uh, clear the inputs. Okay. So to clear the inputs, uh, when we let's go to the form and submit. Here we're just gonna set input state. Okay, so co just copy these items here and then paste. Okay. Okay, save. So now we should clear the inputs when we add a new item. Okay, so now the inputs are cleared. Okay, so perfect. So now we have um, working income section. So if we need to add anything else, we can always edge later. So in next video, we're going to look at the expenses. Okay, and then after that, we go for the dashboard. Okay, I'll see you on the next one. Okay, and now for the expenses. Uh, let's go to the expenses. So it's empty. Um, okay, so what we're going to do, basically the expenses are quite similar to the incomes. So I'm just going to control A, copy everything in here, and then go to the expenses. I'm going to remove everything here. Paste everything that we copied. Okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to refactor the name here, F2, and then I'm just gonna say expense, expenses like that uh, and then the title here change to expenses expenses okay so total expense I'm gonna save uh, let's see down here we have two exports I don't know why get rid of one save Okay, so now when we go to expenses, we should have the same thing. Uh, that's that is in income. Okay, we have the same thing, but we are just going to change the data as well as the everything around. We're going to change everything. So instead of delete income, we're going to change to delete expense. Okay, so in here, most of the stuff is going to remain the same, but for the form though, we're going to use a different form. Okay. So in here, oops, I'm going to get rid of the dashboard. So in the uh, expenses, I'm going to create an, a new form. It's going to be expense, expense form to JS. Okay. So what we're going to do is basically copying everything in the form here and go to the expense form and then put everything in here. So now we have an expense form. I'm just going to change the name, expense. Okay, let's refactor the function here. Uh, okay, so expense. All right, so now, um, instead of income, we need to do some calculations for expenses as well. Let's go to the global context. Global context. Okay, so in here, we need to create some functions basically similar to these three functions here, to these four functions, okay? But the ones we're going to be creating, I'm just going to comment income calculate incomes, okay? So I'm also going to copy this. I just, you know, I want to save your time. I don't want to, you know, do this one by one again. So instead of income, uh, we're going to do expense, expense, okay, expenses, expenses, and then delete expense, expense, total, expenses, like so, okay, I'm going to get rid of the console, okay, so I'm just going to add these functions in. I'm going to say, uh, add expense, expense, get expenses, delete expenses, 
delete expense, and then we have um, calculate actually total total expenses. Okay, so now let's save. So now let's go back to these functions. So here, I believe the endpoint is expense. So if you forget about the endpoints, just go to the routes and uh, double check. So, okay, so we have add expenses. Okay, it should be expense. Let's uh, change this to expense. And expense. Okay, let's go back uh, to the global context. And then let's change this to add expense. Yeah, sorry, add expense. And um, we go back down here, get expenses, expenses, okay, and then down here, you just do delete, expense, like so, so if you're unsure, here's the endpoint, okay. So, now we've done that, so to calculate the total, uh, we're going to be doing expenses. Okay, expenses, the map. So for the expenses, as, as you remember, we have a state here for the expenses, okay? So, in, uh, okay, calculate expenses. And then here, instead of incomes, we're setting expenses, we're changing the state of the expenses, okay? Okay, so here, instead of get incomes, it should be expenses, get expenses. Okay, and uh, also here, get expenses, like so. Okay, so now we have, uh, yeah, the functions that we need for expenses. Okay, so I'm going to save. Uh, let's go to the uh, form, expense form, add expense. I believe that what I've, what I've named it, add expense. Okay, so here we just add, add expense. Okay, so add expense. Uh, handle submit, it's handle submit is fine. Uh, get incomes, we don't need this. <sighs> okay, add expense. Uh, if you want to change this class class names, you can change it. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but I'm just going to change the placeholders. Expense amount. Expense amount. Expense. Just change around the placeholders. Okay, we're going to change the the categories later. But for now, let's just change these. Uh, let's do a description. Uh, just leave it at a reference. Okay, so add expense. Okay, uh, the button you can change the color if you want to. I'm just gonna save this. Let's go to the. I'm gonna close the income. I'm gonna actually close the form as well. Let's go to the. I'm gonna close the income item. Let's go to the expenses. Instead of form, we're gonna. Go exp we're gonna get the form, the expense form, okay? And then let's save. Okay, so when we go to the expenses, so now we have a different form, okay? So, but we need some, d because this one is still connected to the incomes, okay? The post and get methods. So we need to create one for expenses. So for expenses, uh, delete income here. Um. Uh, get incomes. So in here, in the expenses, on initial ren initial render, we want to get expenses. Okay, get expenses. Okay, instead of incomes, save. Okay, so for the total income. Uh, if you remember, in our context, it's total expenses. Okay, so replace and also don't forget to get the total expenses here. 
Okay, so here it says delete income. Uh, we are going to get delete expense here. Copy this delete expense. Uh, we need to uh, import delete expense. We need from the use global state delete expense. Okay, so here instead of delete income it should be delete expense. Okay, that's the delete item. Uh, this one is not the incomes, so this one should be expenses. Expenses. Uh, and then here we're mapping through expenses, not incomes. Expenses. Okay, so you can change these class names. Okay, these class names, and as well as down here, you need to make sure they match. You can change them down here as well. But I'm just going to not change the class names. Okay, so you can change these class names and don't forget to change them down here. It's up to you. So here, instead of income styled, I'm just going to change this to expense. Okay, uh, that's it. I'm gonna. I'm only gonna change that. But you can change these class names and make sure they match down here in the styles. I'm gonna save. Okay, seems like we have an issue somewhere. Mm -mm -mm. Dun, dun, dun. Let's F12 this. Cannot read properties of map. So expenses does not exist. Okay, so let's go back to global income because we're not uh, putting expense, we're not sending through expenses. We, we, we don't have access to that. So now, now let's save. Okay, perfect. Now let's go. So we only have one expense, it says expense test here. Okay, that, that's what we only have. Uh, I'm gonna add a new one, new expense. I'm gonna say to 199 date select option, and then I'm gonna say add add. It's just a random data. I'm gonna add expense. As you can see, we have a new expense. We can also delete this expense when I click delete, but that is not working. Let me inspect and see why why that is. So, I'm going to delete. Okay, I think we need to refresh this. We've already deleted this item anyway. So, let's. Ah, it's not deleted actually. I'm going to click again. Let's see. Let's go to the network tab. Let's see what's going on. Network. I'm going to delete. Okay, cannot delete this ID. Delete expense. The spelling is in, uh, incorrect. Okay, so expense. Now it should work. So now when I click, we need to fix this. <laughs> uh, when I click this, it works. Okay, so now I'm just going to in inspect this. I'm going to go to the okay main overflow. This should be hidden, okay. Uh, overflow. So this should be in the layouts, I think. It's in the layouts. Layouts. Oops, it's not in the layouts. Okay, let's go to the app. Where did I put the overflow? Display data. Overflow, get rid of auto, hidden, okay. So now let me inspect again. Which component is this? So I'm wondering. Okay, after main. Expenses, expenses component. Where am I rendering this component? Okay, expenses. Okay, so I think it's some kind of layout which is which is this uh, overflow. Actually, we need to go to the layouts. I think it's the this one. Let's do overflow to hidden. Okay, so now, uh, yeah, it's not overflowing anymore. 
but probably because I'm not going to make this app responsive, I'm just gonna get rid of this hidden one. You can make this the app responsive by yourself, okay? I don't have time to make this responsive, so the video will be very long. Okay, so now uh, we can add expenses. Uh, we need to change the categories, okay? So for the categories, uh, we're basically just going to change the icons and also change the names. Uh, the names, so let's go back to, let's close the layout, expense form, here. Let's just change the category, category names, so you can use any categories that you want. Okay, you can use your own, uh, your own category, okay. So, um, select option, let's start with, I'm going to start with education. Education. Okay, so let's do education here. And then I'm going to go with groceries, health, and um, I'm just gonna paste them in here. I don't want to do them one by one. Okay, so here are our values. Okay, so if you remember, if you remember when we did our, in the input item, uh, not in the input item, I mean the item for the, uh, when you go to the expenses in the income item, okay, so here uh, we, we have the expense category item icon, okay, so here are the values, okay, that we're checking, the values here, we're checking for those values down here, and make sure those values down here in the expense category icon matches these values here, okay, because we're switching depending on the value. Okay, on the category, category value. Okay, so here we have the uh, category icon. Okay, so this should uh, this sh uh, should make sense to you by now. Okay, so make sure the values and category uh, here matches whatever we're switching. Now uh, let's save. Uh, let's uh, let's refresh. We should have a different icon actually. Okay. So for and also the this date, uh, let me try to add a new, new item. I'm gonna say two hundred. I'm gonna put a date uh, here. Date select option. I'm gonna say health. I'm gonna put some gibberish here. When I enter, uh, the icon does not work for some reason. We're going to see why. I'm gonna try to add another category. Let's do groceries. I'm gonna put some random. Random stuff. Okay, the icons are not working still. So I'm um, gonna save this. Education. Uh, expense form. Clothing. Let's go to the item here. Education, grocery subscriptions. Okay, so here, if type equal to expense, okay. Uh, we're going to do the this expense, uh, this one, expense category icon, okay? Expense category icon, and then, or if it's not to expense, if it's equal to income, we're going to do this, this one, this switch here. Let me just see why it's not working here. What did I miss? Okay, so now let me try to refresh this. Still, the icons are not working. Okay, but first, let's start by formatting this date. So this date looks weird. So I'm going to go to the U-Tools. Remember, we installed Moment. So in the U-Tools, I'm going to create date. I'm just going to say format.js. Okay. So in the date format, we need to create a function which allows us to format the date. So I'm just going to import moment from moment.js. Uh, moment. Okay, so make sure it's from moment. Okay, so in here, I'm going to say export const date format. So this function is going to be responsible for us to format the date. So I'm just going to pass in the date we're going to format in here. And then I'm just going to return moment. Oh, we're going to format the date and then pass in the date in here. 
and then we're just going to say dot format well I want, how do i want to format this date well i want to start with the day okay and then i'm going to do month and then i'm going to do year okay you can separate these by um a dash if you want to or like a slash okay that's entirely up to you so now we have the date format function we need to access that uh, where are we displaying the date uh, here the date so here we can get the date format date format so make sure you import date format and then you pass in the date okay so here make sure you import the date format from utils so i'm gonna save so now the date is formatted okay so it's correctly being formatted all right so for, for some reason i want to see what's going on with this one i'm gonna go to the state i'm gonna go to the components let's go to the expenses expense form let's go to the state okay so category okay it's working education so the values one two three four five six seven eight so we have eight values so all these values are working uh let's go to the here uh, category into input category okay all right so uh, let's go back to income item category okay uh, let me just see the type for a minute let me see the type. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to CLG. I'm going to CLG. I'm going to, oops. CLG type. Okay, so type. Let me see what I'm getting. So type is set to undefined, okay. Now we we see where the issue lies. So when I go to income, type is set to undefined as well. Okay, so type is undefined, so that means our conditional is not working. So let's go to. Uh, let's see if we made a mistake somewhere. Type. Okay, and uh, let's go to where we are. Yeah, mapping the expenses. Um, I didn't. I didn't pass in type okay so type I need to pass in type in here so make sure you get type as well and then you equal to you pass in the type okay for that's for the expenses so let's see if we're getting type so type is now saying expense that's the type now the icons are showing correctly okay so type is now set to expense and uh let's go to incomes uh i believe expenses type income did i set the type in here okay i believe i didn't set the type as well here i'm just gonna do type uh, set the type prop type equal to type okay so now save all right, so now we have expenses. I don't know why there's no icon here. I don't know which item this is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to CLG. I'm going to CLG the income. Okay, now let's see. Wait a minute. I want to do this in the expenses. Okay, in the, in here. So in here, I'm going to paste the console log because I want to see which item we're dealing with without an icon. 
So I'm going to look for the, it's saying add new expense. So this one, the type is set to expense. And uh, the category is freelancing. So we want to check to see if there's an issue with the freelancing. So if we go to the income item down here, freelancing. So the icon is set to freelance. So I'm going to copy this freelancing value and let's go to the let's go to the income item to the form uh expense actually it's expense form expense expense form we need to look for freelancing uh, freelancing value which we do not have okay so one two three four five six seven eight so we have eight uh freelancing instead it should be something is missing here so we have salary freelancing i think it's education that's that's missing so we do education okay so now let's save education uh it's expenses i think i don't think it's the education i don't know which one of the the properties is missing okay oh this is no category icon so down here education groceries one two three four five six seven eight i don't know which one is missing um but yeah i mean i'm not gonna waste your time i'll probably figure out which which of these values is missing so yeah if you've seen it just change it and then the icon will appear okay so yeah that's it for the expense section i'll see you on the next one we're going to be working on the dashboard okay i'll see you on the next one all right, so now for the dashboard, let's get started with the dashboard. So let's go back. I'm just going to close everything else for now. So this is going to distract us. I'm gonna close everything else, close, close. I'll just leave the app open actually. I'm just gonna go for the dashboard. Okay, so in the dashboard, I'm just gonna add an H1. I'm just gonna say all tran transactions, all transactions. Okay, so after that, I'm going to do a stats stats okay stats container so con for container and then in here i'm going to have a chart container okay because we're going to, to be using a chart js for the chart okay so chart container all right so uh let's start doing the chart actually let's create a new com a new component and it's going to be called chart oops i need to adjust my mic okay so it's going to be chart so chart uh, okay and then we're going to create a file in there so chart .js okay so it's going to be a functional component and then we're going to export okay so i uh, remember we've in, uh, installed chart js we've installed chart js so we're going to be using chart js in this uh, component Okay, for to display our data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to import a few things from chart.js. I'm going to import. Okay, so I'm going to import chart. Okay, so chart as chart.js like this. And then I'm going to put a comma. I'm going to import something called a category. Category uh, scale. Okay, so if you want to learn more about chart.js, just go to the documentation of chart.js and then you can learn more i'm just going to paste in some values i'm just i'm going to explain these values later okay so category scale i'm going to paste in some of the other values that we need to get from chart.js okay so we're going to get the point element line element so in this case we're going to be using the line element title tooltip legend and arch element arc element okay so and then we're going to input that from uh, we're going to import that from chart js okay so chart js all right after that uh, we're going to also uh, import the line from chart js which is the line graph okay so import uh, line line graph line and then from so here we're going to say react chart js to okay we're importing the line graph so now uh, we've imported that 
Uh, what else do we need? So here, uh, we need to register these um, elements that we've imported from Chart.js. So to register them, uh, we're just going to do like this, Chart.js, and then dot register. Okay, we're just registering that we're going to be using these, okay? And then we just put these names again because we're registering them because we are going to be using them, okay? So that's how we register these elements. So after that, uh, we let's just go. Uh, let's just go in here in the body. Uh, actually, let's do some. Let's name it chat styled, okay? So const chat styled equal to styled components. Make sure you import style components. And there's going to be a div. Okay, so I'm going to make sure this is the correct spelling for chart and then copy and then replace this div. So here we're going to be using the element line. Okay, so we're going to say line. That's the element we're going to be using. And then it's going to take a data prop. We don't have that prop, um, the data yet. We're going to prepare the data later. So we also need to give it a background, same as this one. Okay, so if you haven't put those colors in the variables, that's that's fine. I'm just going to copy and paste those colors again because we've been using these colors in the shadow forever. Okay, it's the same thing for here. So I'm going to go to the dashboard. Nothing yet because we're not rendering this chart. Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard. So here, I'm just going to say chart. Okay, so it's going to be coming from the chart component. Okay, so now, nothing yet because we haven't put anything yet. And uh, there's uh, an issue as well. Okay, so can I read properties of undefined labels? Okay, let's keep going uh, in the chat. We, we haven't, you know, done, we haven't inserted the data yet as well. So we need to create a data, a, da <coughs> a data object, okay? So uh, I'm gonna collapse this in here. I'm gonna say const data equal to like this, so this is a data object. I'm gonna do labels of the graph, okay? Labels. So for the labels, uh, I'm going to be getting use, global context, global context. I'm going to get a few things from global context, okay? So I'm going to do const, const, I will get, in here I'm going to get the incomes, incomes, okay? And also I'm gonna get the expenses. Okay, so for the labels, I'm going to do incomes and then dot map. I'm gonna map through the incomes, all of the incomes we have. Okay, income. I'm just going to return, I'm going to return um, date format. Okay, because I'm, I'm going to format the date. Date format. If you remember in here, we just need to pass in the date. Okay, because it's taking a, an argument which is the date the date so the date is coming from we need to destructure this uh, let's get the date from the income okay uh, from the income equal to income okay we're just destructuring the date and then we're passing the date we're formatting the date so it's going to be our x label okay so now uh, for the y label it's going to be the amount of the money. Okay, so, and then we're going to do some data sets, uh, data sets. Okay, so for the data sets, it's gonna be an array. I'll make sure you separate this with a comma. So data sets, it's gonna be an array. So the label, for the first one, for the first one, the label is gonna be income. Okay, label. Uh, okay, so this should be an object object and then in this within this object that's when we're going to have the label okay so now we have the label um we need the actual data for this data set so data it's going to be an array again and then here we're just going to map through the uh, incomes again so map incomes we're going to spread the incomes and then map okay so it's going to be the actual data Let map so I'm just gonna say income. Okay, so in here, we're going to return the amount, okay? The amount of the income. So here I'm gonna say const, we're going to destructure the amount from the 
income okay because we want to return the amount so here we're just going to return amount okay so that's our data for the income uh, we, need, we need to let's give it a color a background color shall we so here we do background color let's give it uh, green let's give it a green background color and also uh, let's give it uh, tension actually we'll do the tension later so after this data set i'm going to duplicate this okay so this one should be expenses expenses so here we're doing the expenses okay expenses so here for the expenses we, want, we also want to return the amount okay so here instead of income i'm just going to name this expense 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 okay and then we're just uh, destructuring the amount as for the background i'm just going to give this a red background color you can give it any color that you want so now we have the data we need to do a prop here in the line line graph so data i'm just going to pass in our data okay now let's save hopefully the error should disappear okay so now as you can see we have our line graph but we have no data okay so that's why we don't really see anything of use here we have no data we just need to add the data okay so um, okay so yeah uh let me see how much data we have income we haven't got a lot of data actually so i'm gonna try to add new data here test graph 40 freelance okay uh, let's go back to the dashboard so now we have um, a decent amount of data okay as you can see the highest is 2000 uh, the income, the highest income. If we go to incomes, so the highest is 2000. There it is. Okay. So the lowest, uh, if you go back to the dashboard, the lowest is 40, and the lowest expense is 40 as well. And the highest expense is 200. Okay. And also the highest, we have two highest incomes. We have um, two 2000 amounts. Okay. So uh, this is the dates. Uh, whatever this income is been done so that's the date and also this is the amount okay so now we have the data but what if you want this to be curved okay so if you want this to be curved we're going to be using something called tension so after this i'm going to say tension so for the tension i'm going you can put let's say if you put one it's going to be like uh, ugly it's going to be like so i think the best tension value that i've Discover you can experiment with the tension value is 0.2. Okay, so it's going to be like nicely curved. Okay, so 0.2. Uh, and also I'm going to do the same thing for the expense. Okay, just give it a tension to make it you know curvy. I'm going to put some other data as well in in here in the expense. I'm going to say doctor's appointment appointment. I'm gonna say let's say 60 date i'm just gonna put a random date let's say it was in january whatever uh it should be in health uh tooth extraction wrong spelling but yeah we just add the data doctor's appointment when you go to the dashboard as you can see here you know it's, it keeps uh, the data is dynamic but depending on the, your inputs okay i'm gonna go to income i'm gonna add another one i'm gonna say uh let's say what can, what can i put i'm gonna say stocks stocks um stocks money i'm gonna say 1500 date any random date up to you stocks data and then let's add let's go back as you can see it's a uh, really dynamic okay so 1500 is here also depending on the date okay the date so now uh what we need to do uh let's scroll down uh in here what else do we need so here let's let's skip this so let's go to, to to the back to the dashboard 
and let's keep going on uh, going putting this stuff in the dashboard okay so now we have the chart after the chart i'm going to say dot amount amount container okay okay so in here i'm going to have an income dot income so in the income i'm just gonna say h2 i'm gonna say total income total income then i'm gonna have a p tag when I have a p tag, I'm gonna get the dollar icon, uh, the dollar icon. So make sure you import this from the utils. Okay, so I'm going to use use global context. So from the global context, I want to get the total, the total expenses and total income. Okay. So let's go back to the dashboard. So here I'm, we're going to destructure this. We're going to get total expenses and total income. Income, okay? Because we want to display the total expenses and the total income. So here, uh, let's do total income first. And then we call this function. All right. So after that, income, and then we need expense. Expense, we're basically doing the same thing here, but we need to call. So this should be total expense. Expense. And then we need to call the total expenses. Okay, we call this function. After that, we need a balance. So here, the balance. Okay, so here, it's going to be total balance. Total balance. So for the balance, we haven't done the calculation for the total balance yet. Okay. What we need to do is we need to actually, let's see if we are displaying the total income and the total expense. As you can see, if we go to the incomes, the total is five, uh, five, five forty, And then for the exp uh, expenses, $300. Okay. So as you can see, it's showing the correct values, but for the balance, we need to calculate the total balance after we, after the expenses and everything. So we just need to calculate that. So what we need to do. Um, so here, const total balance equal to, for the total balance, we're basically going to return um, total, total expense, actually total balance, Total balance, subtract uh, expenses. Okay. Uh, what? No, no, X. Total expense. Oops. Total. I think that's the correct um, function name. Okay. So now we are subtracting so we can get uh, the final balance. Okay. So I'm going to copy this, the total balance. Okay, so total balance, I'm gonna put it here. So total balance, I'm going to go to the, um, uh, here, to the dashboard. We also need to destructure the total balance. And we just put it in here. Okay, total balance. Now let's save. I make sure you save the global as well. Something, there's an issue somewhere. I don't know where the issue is. Oh, <laughs> uh, total balance, we're calling, calling the function somewhere. Let's go back to the global context, total balance. Ah, wait a minute. Uh, total balance, drive this function somewhere. So this should be total income. <laughs> this is like a recursion or something. So total income, the function calling itself. <laughs> um, total income, okay. I'm gonna refresh this. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> total income minus total expenses. Yep, so that's the total balance. Uh, why is, ah. 
Oh yeah, I know I know what's going on. Uh let's refresh this. Why is it now zero? Um hmm. Okay, so now it's showing back. Okay, so the total balance is still uh, 5,240. What is subtracted from the, um, so total income manners, this one is 5,240. That's our total balance. Okay. So after that, we also need another function here. So const, this is for transaction history. So as you can see here, uh, if you go to the dashboard, so this is the history for the transactions. Okay, we want to show this history. So this is basically an array, and uh, we're just going to sort this array, okay, depending on when the transaction was made, okay? When, when, when the transaction was made. So here, I'm going to say const transaction history. Transaction history. I'm so terrible at uh, typing. Transaction history equal to uh, it's this let's make it an arrow function so in here we're going to say const history history we're just going to create a new array and then copy the elements from incomes okay and also from expenses uh, expenses okay so we're you know basically copying the elements from expenses and income into a new array called history so we're going to sort Okay, based on the date upon they are created. So here we're basically just going to say history to sort. So the sort method is going to take in a copy function, which is going to two, take two arguments, A and B. So basically what it's going to do is going to compare A and B. Okay, so now here we're going to return new date. New date, because we're going to sort uh, with the date that is it is created. So here I'm going to say, dot b dot minus created at okay so this created at is coming from the database because remember we enabled the timestamps on the uh, on the model when we're creating our models so we enable the timestamps so the timestamps automatically creates when the item is updated or created it okay so we're just going to sort this based on the created it and then minus new date Okay, so here we're just going to do the same thing. This is this should be A. So if you wanna have sorted the other way, you start with A here, or you know, you know what I mean? So now we want it to go the other way. So it's always confusing, like you know, which way do you wanna sort? So for me, I just figure it out as I'm doing it. So if it's not correct, I'll just you know change the values here. I'll just uh, swap A and B. Okay. So A dot created it. Okay, perfect. So now uh, we are sorting, uh, we just need to, I just need to get a chunk of the history. So I'll show you what I mean. So we, we can do it later, actually. I'll copy this transaction history. Uh, okay, and then uh, I'll send it. So now let's go back to the dashboard. Okay, so in the dashboard, uh, here we're calculating the total balance uh, after after uh, let's see let's see let's see let, let me collapse after the amount container after the amount container i'm going to actually after the chat container i'm going to create another history another class history container history con okay uh, in the history container i'm going to create a component and then it's going to be named history whoops Go to the source, let's create a final component. I'm tired of creating components now. So this will be my final component, hopefully. Fingers crossed. So history, uh, dot JS. Okay, so here, functional component as usual. So uh, in the history, it's going to store, it's going to be like this component here. Okay. Uh, so what we need to do, uh, let me go back. So for the history, let's start with doing this style const history uh, history styled okay as usual 
go to styled dot div all right so now we have the history style it's ready so now we need uh, to add the data uh, for the history okay so here let's use the use global context we are going to extract const we're going to extract the the transaction history okay because we want to display the transaction history right here so we're just going to extract that uh for, it stays at zero for some reason i don't know why because we have actually well we're not running we're not fetching on render so on initial render uh, for this dashboard we're not fetching the data so we actually need to do that in the dashboard uh let's do use effect okay so on initial render uh, I would like to fetch I would like to fetch the data okay on initial render uh, we need to get I think it's get incomes okay so here get incomes we need to fetch the data and also get expenses expenses get expenses and then let's fetch the data now let's save okay perfect so now we got our data on the initial render that's what we wanted um now we still need to move on to the history okay so for the history um i'm just going to destructure i'm actually going to say uh, transaction history const I'm gonna say dot dot history all of the items okay i'm gonna put them into a variable called history the values i'm getting i'm getting the va so the transaction history here is going to give us you know like the history of the items so here i'm just gonna put all of those items into a new variable called history and then i'm gonna destructure from transaction history okay so now i'm going to copy this history 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 styled and then i'm going to replace this this div here and then we do an h2 so here we're just going to say a recent history okay so now we have the recent history title uh let's let's map through those history items okay i'm just going to say history history dot map so I'm I'm just gonna get a, an item here. Item you can name this whatever you want. This item. So here we're basically just going to return. You can create a new component for this, but I'm tired of creating components. So here we're just going to return a div. A div. So this div is gonna be div with a class. I'm gonna say history. History item. Okay. So that's our div. So we're gonna give it a key. So key, uh, let's destructure some properties from this item. We need to destructure all of the, our, the properties that we need. So we're going. I'm just gonna destructure. We don't need the date. We need the amount and the type. Okay, and the ID. So the key, I'm going to pass in that ID. Okay, so key, and then it's going to be our ID that is destructure from the item itself. So after that, uh, we are going to do a p tag. Okay, so for the p tag, I'm going to do some uh, conditional styling here. So, as you can see here, if the type is expense, um, if the type is expense, it's going to be red. Or if the type is equal to income, so if you have the money is coming in in the account, it's going to be green and do a plus. Or if it's expense, it's going to be red and negative. So we're just going to do a conditional. So in this p tag, I'm just going to display the title. The title and then for the for the styles we're going to do conditional styles so here i'm going to say color the color so for the color i'm going to say type if type equal to i want to say expense so that's the type if it's equal to expense i'm going to make the color red else uh, i'm just going to make it green okay that's that's about it just make it green yeah 
Okay, so I'm using var and put it a green color, which variable we've created. Okay, uh, I'm also going to do another p tag. Another p tag. Uh, so this p tag is for the is for the amount. Okay, for the money. So I'm gonna copy this p tag. Actually, uh, we can duplicate this p tag. So get the p, duplicate this. Okay, so for this one, uh, we're gonna check. I'm gonna do a color. If the the color equal to expense, uh, do this the same thing here. Okay, but in this case here, I want to display. So here, if if type equal expense expense so because i want to display the uh, the either plus or negative okay so if it's like that i'm going to say in here amount okay i'm going to put the amount but i want to also add a negative if it's expense else else i'm just going to say amount uh, plus okay plus and then i'm going to do amount okay like that. So if it's expense, do this. If it's not expense, do this. Okay. So now let's save. Uh, we, we don't have the history yet because we're not rendering it. Okay. So now uh, that's it for the P tags. We just need to do the styles. Okay. So there, there isn't a lot of styles. Uh, let's just go to the styles in here. So I'm going to start by displaying flex and give it a gap of one RAM. And then I'm just going to select the history item dot history item. Okay, so for the history item, I'm going to give it the usual background, the one we've been using, and do a flex. Okay, do a flex display, and then just fire content space between. So now let's uh, put this to the test. Let's go back to the dashboard uh, in the history container. History con, we need to get the component history component so just make sure you import the component and then save and then we have an issue uh, transaction history is another function or oh, it's not iterable okay uh where did i go wrong transaction oops i need to go to the um, transaction history oh i just need to do this okay uh, otherwise Actually, let me double check. Uh, global context, transaction history, transaction history. Yeah. Um, what am I returning? I'm not returning anything here. So we need to return something in here. So I'm gonna let's say I'm gonna return. I'm gonna return history. Okay. Okay. Now let's uh, let's save. It's an iterable. That is strange. Let's go back. So here I will do this. Okay, now save. Okay, perfect. So now, as you can see, we have these uh, items here. Okay, so now it's showing negative or plus or the text. Okay, it's conditional, depending if it's depending if it's a uh, expense or if it's income okay so now we need to go to back to the dashboard and keep doing the styles okay so uh, i'll go back so now what we need to do is we need to do this these two components here so after the history i'm going to name it salary item salary item so what i'm going to do I'm going to map through the salary and get the minimum value and also get the maximum value. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to need a P tag. Okay. I'm going to need a P tag. Also give it a title. So I'm going to say H2 to salary, salary title. Okay. So here I'm going to say min and then I'm going to do a span in there mean and then i'll do a span 
for, for this pan, I'm just going to say max. So we have a minimum and maximum for the title, as you can see here, we have min, max, and then salary in the, in the middle. Okay, so min, actually for the, here it should be salary, salary, and then after the salary, that's when we do max. Okay, because we're going to do a display flex and justify content to space between, max. Okay, so in here in the salary item, that's where we're going to do some calculations to get the minimum value and the maximum value. So here I'm going to say, oops, I'm going to say math uh, dot mean to get the minimum value. Okay, so we need to, in this mean, we need to pass in some numbers and then we'll get the minimum value out of those numbers. In this case, I want to get the minimum coming from the income. So I'm going to say incomes, incomes, do I have the incomes? I do not. So I need to get the incomes and expenses, expenses here, okay? So I need to map through the incomes, okay, map. Okay, so here I'm just gonna do item and then we're just gonna return um, the item dot amount, item dot amount. So we're mapping through a list of items. So all out of those lists, I want to get uh, the minimum amount, okay? The minimum amount here, we're just returning that, okay? So save, so hopefully we should have a minimum somewhere. So the minimum amount is say not a number because uh, amount is incorrect. Okay, so now it says 40. So if I go to salary, uh, incomes, actually income, salary, so the minimum should be 40, this is the minimum. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing for the max. So here, instead of mean, we're gonna do max. We're gonna get the max amount. Okay, save. So we should have a minimum and a max down here somewhere, minimum and then maximum, okay? I'm also gonna duplicate this thing here. So salary title is the same, but this one should be expense, expense. Instead of incomes, this one should be expenses. Expenses, okay? We're going to get a minimum expense and uh, max expense. So there it is. Okay, so now we just need to style these. Okay, to, so to style them, I'm going to go, I'm gonna start with the stats. Stats container. So for the stats container, I'm gonna do a grid. I'm gonna have five, grid items okay so five columns for the grid because as you can see here so this one is occupying i think uh one two one two uh grid items oh wait, wait. no no this one's this one's so this one's the start container so this one i'm um, having five grid uh grid elements so this one is occupying one two one two and this one one two okay so um, here, I'm going to try to uh, align, actually, before I style the, before I style the stats container, uh, let me try to, uh, wait a minute, stats container, display grid, okay. Oh yeah, so the grid is between the, chart container and the history container. Okay, so the stats, we're doing a, a grid. And then I'm gonna say dot chart, chart container. Okay, so I'm gonna say grid column. I'm going to, I'm going to say one, okay, from one to four. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I mean. So when I inspect, so as you can see, this grid item, it has five columns, one, two, three, four. So I want to start from this one all the way to four. Okay, I want this area to cover from one to four. Okay. And then this one, I want to cover the rest of the data. So flex, we're gonna set that to one. Okay, but before we do that, I'm just gonna set the height of this to 400 pixels. You can set this to whatever you like, okay? 
There you go. So now the height is fine. So now let's style these up. Okay, so let's start with the amount container. We're going to do a display grid as well. So amount container in the chart container. Amount container. Okay, so we're going to do a display grid. So I'm going to have a four, four columns. One, two, three, four. This one is going to fill two columns. This one is going to fill two. This one is going to fill two, but I want this to be in the middle. So I'm going to do a display grid and give four columns. Four columns. Okay, so uh, we're going to have four columns here. All right. So I'm going to target income and expense inside the amount container dot income and then dot exp expense. Okay, I'm just going to make them span grid column and then span two. Okay. So I'm also going to target income expense and also the balance comma dot balance. I'm going to give it a background color, the one we've been using forever. So I'm just going to paste in those values again. We've been using this. So you could have put this into variables. I can't stress enough. I've been saying that over and over. Yeah. So now in the P tag, I'm just going to give it a font size of 3.5 RAM and font weight of 700. Now save. So there it is. Okay. So I want this to be here to fill two grid items as well, this one, and to be in the middle. So this should be when I inspect, uh, if I click on this, oh, not, not that one, but this one. When I click on this grid, so I want it to be from 2 to 4, okay? So, actually, I want it to, yeah, I want it to be at 2 to 4. After this, I'm going to do dot balance, dot balance, uh, grid column, 2 to 4, and then display flex. Display flex and then flex direction to column and then just flex content to center, like so. So now it looks nice, it's looking pretty good. I'm also going to target the P tag because this is the balance. I want it to be green and uh, give it an opacity of 0 0.6 and a font size of 4.5 RAM. Okay, you can do a clamp here if you wanted to change according to the screen size, that's entirely up to you. Okay, so I'm, I'm not here to teach you how to make this one responsive, I'm just here to teach you how to do the functionality and uh, some styles. Okay, for some reason our animation is not working. Uh, we're gonna fix that later. I'll sh explain to you why it's not working. So after the balance, um, the chat container, I'm gonna collapse. We need the history container. History, history container. So in the history container, uh, I'm gonna set the grid column is gonna be four and six. Okay, and then save. Now it's filling this item here. Or what we can do is you can just say flex. Oops, flex. And then just say one. Oh, it's not flex. It's not a flex item. It's actually a grid item. So you can go back and do it like this, minus one. Like this. Okay. So now it's uh, covering the entire remaining space. Uh, that's what we're looking for. And then I'm going to st uh, st start the H2s. I'm just going to give it a margin top and bottom one RAM and then do a display flex. Okay, and then save. So there it is. Okay. I'm going to target the salary title dot salary title. I'm going to set a font size for the salary title and also the span. Okay. Because I want the font size for the span to be bigger and then for the um for the for this one, I want it to be small. We have mean and max. I want it to be small, and then this one bigger. Okay. Uh, this should be salary title. Okay. So as you can see, now it's small. This one is bigger. Okay. So let's keep going, and then we're going to target the salary item. Dot salary. Salary item. So for the salary item, um, I'm just going to give it the same background color and just do a display flex again. We've been doing this forever. We could have created a several component for this one. Okay, but I was just tired of doing components. Okay, so in there, I'm just gonna target the P tag. So for the P tag, I'm gonna give it a font weight and a font size. That's it. Okay, I'm gonna save. All right, so now it's looking pretty neat. All right, so for the history, 
well, let's say we have so many items here. We have like, let's say loads. So I don't want to get all of the items that we are, all of the transaction for the history. I only want to get recent history. So I, let's say I want to get like three items or four items. So like here, as you can see, we're getting only three items. What we can do is we can chop, we can chop the array. Okay, so let's go to the global. So here, instead, we can just say history dot, uh, let's, let's chop the array. So how many uh, elements uh, do we want to chop? So we can use the slice to, you know, get a slice of the array. So we're going to start from zero, the index zero, and then it's going to end at three. So the last index is not counted. So it starts from zero, one, two. Okay, so the last index, like three, is not counted. So here we're getting three, uh, three items. So I'm going to save. Okay, so now, as you can see, we have three items. That's the recent history of our data. For some reason, as you can see, also the background animation is not working. It's only going to work once we change the screen size because the size initially, the state is set to zero. So now when I sort of change the state, that's when it starts to work. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to the use window size. Let's try to... Uh, do this on initial render. Let's see if this is going to change the thing. Okay, let's save this. Let's refresh. Okay, so now it's working. Perfect. So initially, we those values, instead of starting from zero, let's just capture whatever our screen size is. Okay? And then start doing the animation. Uh, let's see if, if it's doing correctly. Okay. Okay, so I think, yeah, it's working. What I'm going to do, uh, let's go back to the orb. Let me see if I might need to change anything here. I'm going to get rid of uh, width, width here. I'm going to save. Instead of width divided by 1.2, I'm going to save the new value. Okay, so this one is fine. You can always, you know, tweak these values here to suit whatever uh, effect you're looking for. Yeah, uh, or you can reduce the height, you can reduce the blur. Maybe let's, let's try 200 to see how it looks like on 200. Uh, you can kind of see it's too bright. You can also change the color if you want to. But I'll leave it at 400, I think, for me. Okay, I'm going to leave it at 400. So, let's try to put some useful, some meaningful data. Alright, so I'm going to get rid of everything here. As you can see, the price is updating. I read, when I go back, there's no data. So, balance, it says minus 300 because uh, that's we've done an expense. Okay, so the number saying infinity, you need to, you need to uh, format this number. If it's less than zero, or if it's if it's less than zero, do something here. So I'm not gonna do that. I don't want to waste your time. It's it's a pretty easy. It's an, it's a no-brainer problem to fix. Okay. So now total expense zero, and then income zero. So let's try to put some meaningful data. So here you can try to put zero. Uh, let me go back. I think it's hist uh, history, uh, amount. Okay, so here you can check if amount equal to zero, as long as amount not equal to zero. Uh, I don't know if amount is not less than zero, less than zero, less than zero, I think. So if nothing changes, so if amount, if amount is not less than zero, if amount is not less than zero, I'm just going to do amount of zero. Let's do amount and then of zero. All right, now let's save. 
Mm. Still not working. Expense, 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 expense. Let me refresh this. Okay, so if less than less than or equal to zero. Infinity amount expense if amount is less than or equal to zero is less than or equal to zero amount or If amount is less than or equal to zero, zero, and then amount. Uh, if it doesn't work, find a way to format this. It's not that difficult anyway. I uh, just want to waste your time. Okay, so now let's add some meaningful data. Uh, let's do, let's start with the income. Developer salary amount, let's say 6,000 a month. I'm just going to put a random date, let's say in January 25th. Salary developer salary salary. Okay, and then you can add income freelance. Okay, so freelancing. All right, so now we can go to the dashboard. There's uh, some data. Expenses, doctors, appointment. 100, so the date, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, so let's do health, extraction, I'm going to add expense, so as you can see here, expense is updating, and then this is the final, the total, or the final balance, okay? And then I'm also gonna, oops, add, say takeaway, takeaway, for like takeaway food. I'm gonna say 40 or 30 pounds. Groceries, um, education, I'm gonna put it to other. I'm going to say take away food. I'm going to add expense. We have reasonable expenses. And then we're going to add another expense. Subscriptions. Amount. Let's do to 70. I think I have so many subscriptions. I've just put 90. And then I'm gonna put a date. Subscriptions. All my subscriptions. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back. Expenses. The highest I think is like 70 quid, 90, depending on the dates. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna add one more, one more expense. Um, let me say traveling. I'm gonna say two thousand. Okay, so traveling. I'm going to do this. It's random anyway. So expense. 
Okay, so I'm gonna add my final income. So here I'm just gonna say YouTube AdSense. I'm gonna say let's say three to four thousand, which is a lot for YouTube AdSense. And uh, let's put a date and say YouTube AdSense money. I'm just gonna add income. Okay, so now, uh, for some reason, oh, because I didn't put a, um, wait a minute, for some reason it didn't add, add it. Let me go to the network tab. Oh, it's gone anyway. I don't know why I didn't add the YouTube income. So I'm gonna edit again, YouTube. 4,000, uh, add the date, YouTube, YouTube amount money. So the other thing that is missing is er error handling. Okay, so there's our YouTube money. So now we have the data. So what's missing is error handling. So that's what if we have an error, okay? So if I add an option here, there's going to be an error. So we need to show the user the user that you know we have an error so let's go back to the global okay so when we add an expense now when we add an expense we catch an error and then we set error so here we need to check the error here i'm gonna say i'm gonna go down here i'm gonna put the error error so if we have an error if we have an error, so that's when we want to, you know, show the error. So I'm gonna go to the form, uh, form. Okay, so I'm gonna get the error. So above the input, I say here, I just say error, if we have an error, and then we're just going to display a P tag error uh, should be p tag not plus p dot error p dot uh, never mind it should be a, just a p tag ah p tag with the class name of error okay so here we just show the error the error Oh my, so we just showed the error in here. If you have an error, I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go to the form, to the expense form. I'm gonna put it above here. Okay, so error. So make sure you're getting the error. Error, and then now let's save, okay? So now, uh, when we try to submit something, now there's an error. It says all fields are required. So now let's start this error. So let's go to the global style. Uh, Where's the global, 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 global style? Here we just say dot error. We also need to animate this error. So you know it kind of shakes. It shakes. Okay. So when we have an error. I want it to uh, shake, back, uh, to sh like, you know, shake like this. So I'm going to give it a color and do an animation of shake. Okay. And then the easing function is easing and ease out. Let's do keyframes. And then the name of the animation is going to be called shake. Shake. Okay. And then at 0%, uh, the transform translate X, translate X is going to be 0. And then I'm going to do a 25%. It's going to go on 10 pixels. Okay, I'm just going to paste the remaining keyframes here. So at 25, is going to go to 10 pixels. And then at 50, it's going to go to minus 10. It's like, you know, shaking like this. Okay, it's just basically going, moving in the X direction, negative and positive, until it comes back to the initial value, which is zero. Okay, now save. So now it's shaking if you have an error. Okay, 
So now I want this error to disappear as soon as I start to type something in the input. Okay. So um, let's go to the form. I'm also gonna get set error. Okay, set error because I wanted the error to disappear uh, once we change. We doing the handle change. I'm gonna say set error. I'm gonna set that to an empty string. Okay, to an empty string. Once we start changing the input, I'm gonna do the same thing for the form. Error, set error for the handle input change. I'm gonna put that to an empty string. So once we have an error, when I start to type the error, I want it to disappear for some reason, it's not disappearing. I'm gonna refresh this expense. Let's we have an error. It's not disappearing. Okay, set error. Uh dun -dun -dun -dun. handle input, handle submit. Okay, set error. Let's go back to the global context. I wanna see. I want to see why the error is not uh, disappearing once I start to type. Okay. So set error. Okay. That is very, oh, because we are not actually exporting set error. We're not, you know, Exporting here now save okay so now when I go back when I try to submit let's say without something now all fields are required okay so yeah there's a uh, validations here okay so depending on what error is missing it's just gonna show you here as an error okay so yeah now we have all the error handlings if you need anything else you can let me know in the comment section if you need to uh, extend upon these features or if you want to make it responsive you can ask me in the comment section I might be able to help you yeah, um, that's it for this video. If you're new to this channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any um, requests that you'd like to let me know, you can let me know in the comment section. I'll see you in the next one.